All right, welcome this evening. How many are here to praise the Lord again this evening? Amen. That's right. We're, well, this is a good bunch here. This is the bunch that I like to hang out with. So praise the Lord. Well, so glad you're here again this evening. And I think it's going to be another powerful, powerful time. But, you know, the most important thing is, I believe, and it was mentioned during the three days here, is that our worship is not a preparation for the preaching. Our worship is for the Lord. You know, the Lord doesn't need the word. He is the word. But he takes and receives our worship as the offering that we bring, especially as we bring it with our full heart, with our full emotion, with our full thought. So I just want to encourage you tonight, feel free this evening as you worship, feel free to come out of the chairs. We don't have pews for a reason because we have chairs to, you know, get out of. And uh, if you feel some of you are um, love to flag, we have some flags. If they haven't been brought out yet, they're in this room right here. So I just want to be able to release that tonight. And those that dance unto the Lord, feel uh, free to dance unto the Lord this evening. And to just give yourself, if you care, to come forward and just to uh, be prostrate before the Lord, feel free to do that. And let's let heaven come down and touch the earth. Let's stand together. Thank you, Lord. Father, you said that you even taught us, Jesus, you taught us, Lord, to say, let your kingdom come, let your will be done here on the earth as it is in the heavenly realm, O oh God. And so, Lord, tonight we desire to walk in that heavenly realm right here on the earth, O oh God, that, Lord, you would come and you would fill the house with your presence once again, God, that you would touch us in uh, powerful ways, Lord, as we worship you, Lord, that we want it to be a, a beautiful offering, a sweet incense to you as we lift up tonight our praise and our worship. So God, inhabit the praises now we ask. Come and be filling this place, Lord, with your presence as we worship you now, and we lift up our voices in praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. of you are happy to be alive. Huh? You stood. You stood outside my grave with tears still on your face. I heard you say my name. My Yeah. 
Just breathe him in tonight. He is all around.
Profess that tonight into your arms. I'm letting go. Your love is everything. Just lift your hands into your arms. I'm letting go. Your King of my heart, be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. Cause you are.
you're never. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. I know it, God. Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down No matter the circumstance Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down Sing that just the voices Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down one more time. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down.
there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. Come on, wow. What do you say? Wow. Is that incredible? Let's give a hand for the worship team. <clears throat> Beautiful. You were cutting out tonight. Fantastic. You can even you can kind of stay up here for a bit. I'm going to I'm going to do about I'm going to do a bit of stuff and then you can kind of play behind me when I give you the nod. That's awesome. Good. Well, you may be seated. This is fantastic. Thank you for uh, inviting everybody and coming. You know, a party isn't a party without you, right? Everybody next to you makes the party. If you're not here, the party's missing someone. <clears throat> and uh, it's been so good to be with you. We've just loved our time. 
and want to just say a special thank you. I want uh, Pastor Anita to come up here and, uh, as well. She's been a major coordinator of everything. Is she amazing? I can tell she runs everything. Uh, within 10 minutes, you know that. And she does a great job, and she's extremely gracious. And, you know, who ha who's helped out to make this thing such a great success we've had? Who is it? Well, in addition to people like the worship team who we see, and we so appreciate all that you've brought, we have the tech team back here who are not seen, but without them, this would not be happening. So we thank you to our tech team. You're awesome. You're awesome. And so often they don't get known until something is a little bit off, but we thank you. You're awesome. Uh, we want to thank our hospitality team. They've been amazing. Cindy, Mim, and, and everybody else, all of them, thank you. Um, our parking lot attendants, we thank you for being out there. We have a security team that has been monitoring the property. We thank them. Yeah. It's important in this day and age. We want to thank all the ushers and greeters. You've been awesome. And we want to thank all the drivers. Harold has headed up the team of drivers, and these drivers have been back and forth, back and forth to Philadelphia, back here to the hotel, and back here. Thank you to all of the drivers. Did I forget anyone? Our staff, our staff. We thank our staff because you have been laboring. You've been laboring for weeks and months to make this happen. So thank you to Pastor Joel and all of the staff, our secretary, Dolores, and Donna, treasurer. She's been counting. and. Yeah, Cindy's been awesome in the office. So thank all of our team. We appreciate it. And our altar ministry team, thank you for just showing up and being here. Thank, you, thank you, Anita. Thank you. You know, it is, uh, it's an amazing thing when you do a conference. We were a tiny, you know, we're, Ken, I told you, has, there's no one there. We all froze to death. But um, our town is now about 100,000, 150,000. It's actually the most beautiful town in Canada because it's got semi-arid desert, it's wine-growing country, it's got skiing and boating, and we live on a lake. But, <clears throat> you know, from the very first days when we started, we valued conference where we bring in apostolic... I remember John Wimber came to Vancouver for the first time, and I had my mind blown as I listened to John Wimber. From there, it just went on and on. Mike Bickle, we traveled to Kansas City. Then Mike came, and soon we had every... You know, leading ministry of the revival stream, we must have had 150, 200 different ones through. And it shaped not only our church, it shaped us, it shaped our city. Actually, it shaped Canada. And uh, there's something to be gleaned when we, when we sit, you know, and cross-pollinate with one another in the kingdom of God. It's more than one building one group of believers were the kingdom of God, the church, ecclesia, global, and that's what we do. That's what we're doing. It's phenomenal. Amen. And, uh, you know, someone said, who is this amazing, gifted, beautiful artist? Who is she? Who is she? Come over here. <clears throat> Can I have another microphone? <clears throat> so this is Janet Hyung. Okay, come. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Where do you live, Janet? California. California. What, uh, L.A. area? Nearby Los Angeles. Near Los Angeles. Now, you are nationality? I came from Korea about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a prophetic artist and traveling for the painting. And I'm sharing the kingdom gospel and heaven's message through my painting. Amen. <laughs> now, tell us, what's, what's this one? I haven't seen you do the little birds before. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying, you know, painting this one. You know, when I came this church, I, feared the, I felt the full of love and very cozy. And welcoming. Very, very cozy? Uh -huh. That's cozy. a good word. Cozy. Yeah. Cozy. <laughs> so I got inspiration from this church and the congregation member of this church. So this is the nest of hope. Wow. And this is a place feed peoples, raising children, 
and training you know, the disciples yes. and spread the gospel. Awesome. To the world. So it's like Jesus, I would gather you, like the little chicks. Mm -hmm. So the little ones are going to come out of the nest. Yeah. This, and then here, um, I'm still working on it, but he's oh. uh, carrying the, you know, all, the olive. olive. Branch. Mm -hmm. Noah's olive branch is in the mouth of this dove right here. There's a little green branch. Wow. It, it represents hope and revival and freshness. Wow. Have you done birds before? Uh, yes, but not like this. Never. Mm -hmm. I've never seen this one, and she comes to all our conferences for years and years and years. I've never seen one like this. So you are the inspiration of more prophetic <laughs> art. Come on. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so all those different paintings, many of them you've done at different cities, and they have a message. And what do you see? What, what do you feel God is doing through your uh, inspirational message? Yes, um, you know, basically, it was not my plan, but it was God's plan. So now I'm traveling, you know, with the visual message. And, you know, at the, out there, there's my product table, and all of the paintings, I painted a different conference, conference, conference. And everywhere has a different, you know, message and different like, perspective, dif different like, personality of the people. So it represents gospel and kingdom's message. So would you say you travel to how many conferences a year? Honestly. Honestly, no, like uh, 30 to 50. 30 to 50. Mm -hmm. 30 to 50. Come on. That, that, yeah, that is the, like a flight. Yeah. But you know, after, um, except that, I do local conferences and training and workshop yeah. beside the conference. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's give it up Thank for you. Janet Young. Beautiful. 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 <clears throat> okay, well, uh, I'm coming to the happiest part of our conference in a way. And that is because uh, years ago, the Lord broke my heart for children at risk. I don't know how it happened, but it did. And I began to be moved greatly that we would rescue full-blown orphans, uh, then later human trafficking, uh, child soldiers. <clears throat> so we've been doing this for 20 years minimum. In the last <clears throat> number of years, I, ha I had a situation where we actually had a painter pardon me, who came to one of our conferences. She wasn't a painter. She was a young person that just got saved. And we gave a missions call for children at risk. And she said, I want to help the children. I, but she had no money. She had just become a believer. She was from a rough, rough and wild background. And she went to her pastor and said, what should I do? And he says, you go jump in the offering basket. Go jump in the offering. Give yourself. So she went and come, <laughs> came up and put herself in the offering area. And uh, I kind of looked at her, and the Lord spoke to her and said this, <clears throat> paint three paintings for Wesley, and they will become hundreds of thousands of dollars for children at risk. She never painted in her life. She went home, and uh, the next year at the conference, she came again, and during one of the sessions, the, she brought up these three beautiful paintings of children at risk from our pictures of where we'd gone, and she presented them to me. And the Lord had spoken to her, but I didn't really know what the Lord had said to her. <clears throat> I just kind of got them. And I thought, oh, these are beautiful. And then her pastor, which is my friend, came running up and he goes, I just had an idea. Whoever would like this painting for $1,000, come and get it and we'll give to the children and we'll start a movement. of it." And I went, I never even got the painting. I never got the painting home. I didn't even hardly get it out of the bag. <clears throat> and they took my paintings, but it was awesome. And three people came running up <coughs> and... Uh, that was the start. That was the afternoon. I went to her after the meeting, and I said, I said, uh, Michelle, I said, uh, if we invite more people to come and sponsor children for $1,000, would you be able to do more paintings? She said, I suppose I could. I said, could you do 50? She said, oh, that'd be a lot of work, but I suppose I could. I said, okay, sh let's do it. So that, after, that night, I called... And there was something like $89,000, $90,000 was raised for children at risk that first night. And that was about uh, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. 
And, the, and we, we birthed really this call. And since that time, we've been able to raise um, 10, 12, 13 million dollars for children risk all around the world. 100% of what we've raised has gone to children. Uh, after John, who shared with you today about <clears throat> maybe in which one of the services, went to the Philippines where we were actually uh, for a massive um, <clears throat> hurricane that came to the Philippines, the worst ever in recorded history. They, uh, they basically took him into the dark underworld to see what was going on, and he said he wanted to go. There had been converted people that had come from the trafficking uh, background, and they said, okay, we're going to take you to the worst place in Cebu. Cebu is a, is a capital resort city in the Philippines. We go there every single year. And um, they took him to Mango Avenue. And they said, but whatever you do, you can't make, you can't appear, you know, impacted by this or they could kill us. You must appear like you're a customer trying to buy children. And so <clears throat> they, he said yes. So they took him down the alleyways. And they got to the place, and then they said, okay. And so the, the one guy posed as bringing this guy to buy children. And uh, that was John Perks who preached here today. And when they opened the door to the alley, he said he saw cages stacked three high with girls, little children, 2 to 12 years old. And he suddenly wanted to throw up and vomit. And uh, he just immediately said, no, no, I don't want any of these. They said, oh, no, don't, don't leave. We, got, we have more in the back uh, upstairs in the, in the next room. <clears throat> and John was so impacted that, 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 that trip, he came back and he had a dream. And he has these very prophetic dreams. And he had a dream and his wife had a dream virtually the same night about these bricks. And uh, he had a dream and he saw faces of children on bricks because we build children's homes. And uh, the faces and, the, and the, the word of the Lord, because God comes in his dreams, he's had about 300 reoccurring dreams with the same personality, an old man with a cane. He's had over 300 who tells him things. And the old man, the cane said, every brick has a story and told him to raise up this brick offering and that the brick would represent a life, a child. And so uh, we began to do that about four years ago. And like I said, <clears throat> we've raised millions of dollars for children at risk. And so I just want to show you a couple of the two projects we're going to be receiving for tonight. And then I'll explain how we're going to do it. <clears throat> if um, uh, Jonas could just, yeah, let's be a hero. So um, <clears throat> we're raising this evening for two projects, both in the Philippines. One, go ahead, click. One is in the middle of uh, the largest slum in all of Manila, and we've worked there since 2001 um, in Manila, and the pictures you're going to see, <clears throat> that's Bishop Cheeto. He works with 2,000 churches. He's one of the 40 bishops of the Philippines uh, right there, and we built that entire complex. That's in the middle of a massive, massive slum with lots of prostitution, lots of drugs. Show me the next one. <clears throat> and we have so many programs going out there, feeding programs. Show me the next one. Children's programs, children's school, mothers come, uh, et cetera, et cetera, <clears throat> and these are being, uh, intervention is happening before they get really trafficked. <clears throat> Go ahead, show me the next one. And so we're building that. I just was there again two months ago. We're building an extension, and it'll be the completion. Show me the next one. That's John there. <clears throat> and uh, now this girl here is one of the girls we rescued from the anti-trafficking. This girl, this little girl here. And she's now in our home. And we've raised probably four uh, brick houses uh, outside of the city. <clears throat> we have 20-some acres given to us by the governor of Cebu because she want, cause we've been working together there's, with this partner organization for 20 years, and she trusts them. <clears throat> John there, he looks like he's crying because he was. When you go there and see the girls, of course, they were actually, you know, in that situation. Show me the next one. And uh, these, all these girls were rescued. We've now seen two brothels shut down in the same region. because Praise the Lord because of intervention by people like yourself. <clears throat> Show me the next one. And uh, this is our other uh, up in India. All these girls were actually uh, literally brought out of human trafficking, busted out like, like, you know, sting operations. And they're in homes that are built and schools buy offerings just like this. We act, we're the ones that raised this with... Um, 
Liana Cinquanta, Liana Cinquanta Tell Asia. And so there's uh, that one <clears throat> and one more. And uh, so these are the type of homes that we're building. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to receive an offering 100%, 100% of everything raised tonight, both in the front and from the, uh, the body here. All of it's going to these two projects, 100%. And you'll receive receipts and communication. And so what we've done is that we, a brick represents basically a life. And that we could pretty well see a life intervene for about $1,000. So what I'm going to ask is that some of you are going to come and get a brick for $1,000. That's a $1,000 uh, giving into the orphan, the, the most exploited. Now, you can either do it... <coughs> all at once or spread it over 10 months, 10 months. I have most people do it over 10 months. And so uh, it's $100 a month and we carry it through and it's amazing. And you just say like, I don't know if I can do it. It doesn't matter. This is not a yoke, it's an invitation. And you'll be surprised when you take the first step, the water becomes solid. It's amazing. And you, you just say, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. And let's say you go two months and say, I can't do it. You phone us and we phone you and because we're phoning our partners all the time. And you say, it, it, it just, uh, I can't do it this month. It's fine. Everything's cool. The thing is, William Carey from India said, attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. So this is going to be my $1,000 group. Now there's others that are going to come here. 500, Okay. So let's just say I'm stretching as much as I can stretch because I understand I pastored a church for 30 years, same place, I've got the purple heart, the bronze medallion, the black stripe, I've got it all. And I, I understand sometimes, like let's just say, you know, a young adult or maybe four young adults get together. We say we're doing a brick, you know, four teenagers. That's phenomenal. And so you can do that in one-time gift and or five months. 10 months, it's okay. We'll have the sheets of paper. You can fill that out. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> what was I just going to tell you? I had a good thought and it just went away. That's what happens as you get old. <laughs> Renew. <laughs> Replenishing anointing. Where's Patricia King when you need her? Uh, um, Katie, come up. <clears throat> um, and Katie has a revelation as well. What has God, the Lord shown you about this thousandfold offering? Well, you know, I... I actually sowed a thousand dollars myself. Last the night, the Lord told me right before I even knew that that's what you guys are doing. When I was standing on stage last night preaching, the Lord said, "I want you to give a thousand dollars." And then today, when we went to the luncheon, I found out that you can actually rescue a girl for a thousand dollars. And so I went, "No wonder God told me to give the thousand dollars." So I'm doing that myself. So I want a brick, please. Thank you, Heidi. Can I have my brick, please? Can you hold my brick for me? And then, um, Heidi, you come hold a brick with her. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and for me, um, well, what I like to do, too, is when people give, I, I like to release what I have for them. Mm. So since I'm here carrying something very powerful, I thought that as people came up and sowed, whether it be 1500 or even if they just can give what they can give, um, that I could bless and you know touch and agree with them on their offering. Yeah. Because about a few years back, what happened was God told me that he was going to give me the thousandfold blessing that Deuteronomy 111 talks wow. about. And so I remember reading it. It, said, it says, I, I pray that you be blessed a thousandfold more than you already are yes. as he has promised. Yes. So it's actually a promise of a thousandfold increase. And when I read that, I thought, oh, no, that's not finances, God. And he goes, yes, it is. Look it up. So I actually tore apart the words there in the Hebrew. And when I got to the number 1,000, it means the number, but it actually means cattle, flocks, herds, and sheep. Okay, so you're saying the word has embedded within it the concept of 1,000 of something. Yes, it, it, it means provisional increase wow. in a 1,000 fold, not, not a 1,000 plus. But a fold, which is like a multiplication. Yes. Right. And I remember when God told me that at first, I, I didn't believe it. I, I was, I, I didn't have enough faith for it. And so I was like, well, you know, that's really great. But I'm still struggling with the 30, 60, 100 thing and believing that. Right. So uh, I said, you're really going to have to help me to believe, to receive it. And um, 
So he did. He started showing me the number 111. 111. Because it, it's from Deuteronomy 111. And so I'd like, you know, be cooking something in the microwave, and I'd look up right when there was like one minute, 11 seconds left. You know, I'd get a text right at 111. Um, I'd get a phone call right at 111. I'd be in my car listening to worship music, and God would sovereignly make me look down for no reason, you know, at my CD player, right when it'd be like on track 111 seconds in. You know, I would pass by, walk by the TV as I'm going to go into the office, and I would hear the weatherman say, it's 111 degrees today in Phoenix, Arizona. And I'd be like, ah, right? And I mean, just like everywhere. I mean, I went to watch Patricia preach, and she was preaching on it. And I remember sitting in the back, and I was checking my emails, and I'm listening to her message. I'm like, wow, if Patricia King is preaching on it, then it's for real, right? Because she's the mama, right? And... I remember I was checking my emails while she was preaching on it, and my phone, I used to have a BlackBerry, and it got stuck, and I couldn't get it to back out of my email app, I couldn't get it to power down, I couldn't get it to move, it was just frozen on the screen, and I was like, why is this happening to my phone, and I suddenly looked at this, the email icon, and it happened right when my 111th email had come in. Right, so I was this like... This is after you asked for the sign. This is after I asked, for, and God told me he was going to give me the sign, right? And then the same thing happened the next week when Joshua Mills came to preach. He's preaching the 111. My phone gets stuck because I'd already cleared out my emails. And it got stuck again right when the 111th email came in. And I'm like, God, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm stuck on this message. I'm even emailing you about it, okay? So, you know, and, and I remember my husband was getting it. He was getting it, and I hadn't told him. Because I didn't want him to think I was a cuckoo, right? Oh, yeah, that was a bold right, Kate, whatever, right? And he was getting it, and I knew because I would be in the house, and also not the blue, I'd hear him from his office, which is unusual. When he goes into his office, he disappears. He, like, goes back there. You have to actually go in there and spoon feed him food to make sure he stays alive, right? I'll go in, he'll be staring at the computer doing his, because he's my web and my tech guy, and he's, like, doing this, and I'll go and put my hand like this in front of him, and he won't blink an eye. He just keeps on going. It's like, okay, are you there? Break contact with the screen. Come on. And But he started talking. He would shout out every day, honey, it's 111. Really? Right. And you hadn't told I him. had not told him. So after like the third day of that, I, I finally go back there and go, why are you doing that? And he goes, I don't know. I just noticed that God's been having me look up every single day right when the clock on my computer turns to 111. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, this is amazing. And I told him what happened, right? And then I said, we are getting the thousand-fold increase already, a thousand-fold more in our communication. I know you're alive now. <laughs> right? And, I mean, it just kept on going. I remember I went to an office one day to look at a space to rent for office space. And the guy's showing me the space, I'm looking at it, and then I had to use the ladies' room. So I went next door to the business next door, which happened to be a spa, one of those facial places. And so I went in and I said, can I use your restroom, please? And they said, oh yeah, sure. So I go in there and I use the restroom and then I'm washing my hands and I look up and they had this poster on the wall advertising Botox. And then it said this, it says, no matter what your problem is between your eyes, if it's a 1 or 11, Botox can fix it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in the bathroom taking pictures of it going, oh my God, even Botox is preaching the 111 message. Right? I mean, it was crazy. Like, I started seeing it at the airports. I would go to the airport and um, it was really weird. And like, I would be waiting to get on the plane and then I would see a screen, a brand new screen. I've been in airports hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times like you have. Okay, and there was a brand new screen in the airport that showed how many passengers were on the plane as they checked in. And I was looking, I go, I've never seen that screen before. And I looked down to see how many passengers were checked in for my flight. And right as I looked down, the 111th passenger checked in. And I was like, oh my God. And then the next week, I go to San Diego and I'm boarding the plane. And God made me, I'd never done this before after all these hundreds of flights. I handed my ticket to the guy, he scans it, and God made me turn around and look at the guy's screen. And right as I did, I saw that I was the 111th passenger to check in on the flight. I mean, it was like everywhere. And then it started to manifest. We got our very first big offering right then. We, we were gonna lose our rental for our office. I needed a miracle. I asked God to give me one. And I said, where's that 111 thing? Come on, you've been bragging about it, where is it? 
And he showed me uh, a vision with oil on my fingertips. He said, you struck oil. It's right at your fingertips. And within three days, we received our first $100,000 offering. Come on. 100000 Right. And then I just started to spread the news. I started, I felt like I, I said, can I give it to other people, God? Is it just for us? And he said, no, I gave it to you so you can give it to the body because the body needs to be empowered with wealth so they can help the, you know, the prisoner, the widow, the orphan, and all these things. And so I started going to churches and praying for people to get it. And so, I mean, I have crazy reports. Like this one woman came up to me and said, okay, my mom died 12 years ago. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And she said, well... Since then, her house has been on the market, which is my inheritance, for 12 years, and I've never had a single offer, not one. And I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. She goes, but I watched you preach that 111 message. I sewed into it, and the next day I got two offers after 12 years. I chose one, and I closed, and I have my inheritance now. Come but, on. Yeah. And then this other lady said, I was completely broke. I had zero money, and I had this piece of property in Canada that I've been trying to sell for years and years, and it never sold. Yay, Canada. Yeah, yay, Canada. And she goes, and so I'm, I was in the United States, and she goes, and a friend of mine texted me and said, you need to watch Katie Souza. She's going to preach the 111 message on the web stream this Thursday. So she said, so I watched, and I sold like $200. That's all I had to my name. I sold $200, and she goes, and the next day, my attorney calls me and says, okay, I know. You're broke, and you need money, and all this other stuff. And and I, this is what I'm going to do for you. Okay, I'm going to front you the money for your land, and then when it sells, I'll take the money and pay myself back. So he wrote her a check for six hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars for the property. Six hundred and seventy-four. Six hundred seventy-four thousand. He fronted her the money. Now look, I'm an ex-drug dealer. You don't front. <laughs> you don't front. You especially don't front $674,000 on a property that hasn't sold for years and years, and you don't know when the money's coming back. But this, God can make somebody front you some money, a big old check. And this anointing has that kind of power wow. to give you favor with people. You know, I mean, and it's crazy. I had a man, this is the craziest story ever. I had a partner come, they showed up, and they said, you're not going to believe this story. I said, okay, tell me. He, he said, said to you. Yeah, the, the wife. The wife told me, the husband was there. Said, she said, I've been sick for years, and we spent all our money trying to get me well. And we were completely broke, and we didn't know what to do. She goes, so I had these people that were, we knew them, but we didn't expect it. They came out of the blue, and they wrote us a $30,000 check after I watched your thousand-fold message, and I sewed into it. They came and gave us $30,000. I go, wow, that's amazing. She goes, that's not all. I said, what, what else? She goes, my parents... After I watched your thing and sewed into it, the thousandfold message, my parents came and said, you know what we've decided? We've decided that while we're still alive, we're going to give you your inheritance that you would normally get after we passed away. We're going to give it to you now. And they gave them like $150,000 as their inheritance while they were still alive, the parents. So I'm like, oh, my God, that's so amazing. She goes, but I'm not done. I said, what else? She goes, then my husband went to pick up trying to trick you, right? So he... he picked up this thing, and he goes, oh, it's a gap, and he threw it away. And as he threw it away, the Holy Spirit goes, no, no, pick that up. And he, he goes, what, is that you? And he's like, he hears, yes, pick it up. So he picks it up, he opens it up, he reads it, and he goes, oh, no, this, that can't be you. This is, that's not you, Holy Spirit. This is a total lie. This is a scam. And he goes, no, I, I want you to look into it. And it said that he had, that he had stock in a company. And he goes, well, this can't be for me. I've never bought stock in this company. Never. Not once. I've never even, I don't even own any stock. And so, but the Holy Spirit kept on pressing him. So he called the people and somehow, he has no idea how, but this is God. He had stock in this company, $250,000 worth of stock. He cashed it in and got the money. Stock he never bought. And it happened after they sewed into the thousandfold message. And they, uh, they have the money. Their faith and they exercised their yeah, faith. Yeah, and they went forward. I mean, uh, uh, you know, they sewed and they got this letter, they called, and they, they have the money. 
Wow. They have the, they got the money. I mean, I have had crazy miracles. I, I reports of people they sew into this and they get a car given to them the next day. And a lady who hadn't been able to sell her house, she sewed into it. The next day, she she sold her house after a year of waiting. Uh, another lady, uh, they sewed in two no twenty five hundred dollars and they received a quarter million dollar contract five days later. Uh, man, I can go go on and on. A lady that had money appear, actual physical money appear in a box in her uh, in her business after she took that money out and she handed it to a guy that came to showed up at her business and said, if you don't give me any money, I'm going to turn off your electricity right now. I need cash. So she went and she took her rent money, gave it to him. And then she's like, oh, my God, God, what am I going to do about the rent money for the business? I just gave all my cash to the electric guy to keep the power on and she hears the spirit of the lord say go look in that metal box and she goes no 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 i just took the money out of the metal box so there's no money in the metal box i need to oh my gosh i, I can't ask my mom i already asked my mom she's she's, she's dry tap she's gonna be angry if i ask her what am i gonna do and she hears the spirit of the lord go go look in that metal box and she goes god it's not in the metal box. And I, I don't know who I'm going to ask. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't even ask my sister. They've already been doing, giving me money and everything else. I don't know what I'm going to do, God. And he goes, go look in that metal box. And she goes back and looks in the metal box, and God created in cash the amount of rent money that, that they needed for the rent. I mean, I can just go on and on with stories. I mean, a guy that, a couple that he got hurt at his work, and he went on workman's comp then when he came back he was still hurt he couldn't work so they fired him this guy had worked for this company 20 years faithful shows up every day nice guy works hard they fire him after 20 years so they take him to court and they fought this company for years and years and they would lose and then they'd go back and get another appeal and try it again and they'd lose and they'd appeal and lose and finally they get the death doom the death doom letter that says that's it no more appeals you're done it's over case closed you lost so, like, that's how it stood for years. And then they saw me preach this message. They sewed into it. I, you know, we prayed. And they went back and, like, five days later, got a check in the mail on a closed case for $45,000. Come on. Yeah. So when you've, when you've spoken about the concept, about the promise, people have mixed their faith with it. Yes. And they have seen the thousandfold increase. They have. They, 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 they use your faith. They sow. And then I just pray for them, and, and then that starts manifesting. I, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen 111, haven't you? How many of you have seen 111? See, it's already happening for you. You just got to keep placing your faith and sowing, and then you're going to see it manifest. Every time you see the 111, what I do is I sow, and then I say, I saw it. It's mine now manifest. And then it just keeps on coming for me. I mean, I tell you what, I show up at places, and people just hand me checks. It's awesome. And we just got our second 100000 not too long ago. That was our second big gift. Wow. We got another 50000 given to us. And, and so with it, you're going to prisons? With it, we're using it to... How, how many prisons are you we going are to? We are in 3,500 prisons. Say that again? 3,500. 3,500 prisons. Yes. Come on, give the Lord praise for that. We've, we've actually... We've given away 300,000 free copies of my first book to inmates. And that, those copies weren't just flooded into the prison. They were individually requested with letters from inmates or chaplains uh, for the book. So every book had... And you're seeing signs and wonders, we're seeing salvations signs. Yeah, in we prison, are. everything. Amen. everything. Yeah, we are. Amen. Okay, here, so here's what we're going to do. That was amazing. She told me she had testimony. And I said, I, I want to hear the testimony because we, we've, we ourselves are only coming into belief in this in the last three, four years. That's all, three or four years. I mean, I've always been a giver to children at risk, but I mean, coming into this belief of blessing, that's a new experience, and I'm old. 59, that's old. Not too old, but too old to not have known sooner. So, okay, so here's what we're going to do. If that's you, if you want to support one of these children's homes uh, in the Philippines, I want you to come up. You have to take a brick and then stand... Uh, Take a brick and then just stand shoulder to shoulder. The thousand will be here on this side. Okay, Heidi, you're representing that right here for, for Katie. You got to hold your brick and then the 500 is on this side. So that's it and l let's do it. Yes, yes. He asked if he can do it on payments. We're going to do it. Remember, you, uh, we're going to give you the piece of paper. Stephen, you come. Uh, you can do it over five months or 10 months. Okay. And 
Nothing is binding to you. Because we understand this. This is something you're just, you're moving by faith. You're saying, I can do this. And so that, it's, it's, a, it's an invitation. Amen. And again, 100% of this is going to the children at risk. Everybody, the thousands, take your, take your brick and turn, turn to, the, uh, uh, to the crowd. And Stephen, you're going to pass out a piece of paper to everyone. Take your brick. We're going to line up shoulder to shoulder. 500 is right here. 500 is right on my left. 500 is on my left. Thousands right here. Take your brick shoulder to shoulder. And again, 100% of this is going to the children tonight. And we are actually building right now by faith because we knew that we were coming here. So we're actually building right now as we speak. We have workers on site who we are committed to because we know by faith God is going to be moving through all of us together. Okay, so take a brick, shoulder to shoulder. Katie, I want you to start moving down the line, start to pray. Take your brick, take your piece of paper, shoulder to shoulder, face the audience. 500's here, 1,000's here. Shoulder to shoulder. Actually, we'll come this way a bit more. Yes, you can. Come. Okay, uh, uh, Heidi. Everybody move five steps this way. Good. 500's right here on my left. 500's on my left. 1,000's on my right. Shoulder to shoulder. Everybody has a brick. Right here. Go ahead. You get a brick. You got to get a brick. You get a brick. Front right over here. You get a brick. Yes, 500, you get a brick. Now, the Bible says <clears throat> Cornelius was praying regularly and giving alms. That was offerings. And it said his prayer and his giving went up to heaven as what? A memorial. That's, the, that's from the Greek word, from memo. Every time he gave, it was a memo to heaven. And God saw his memos and sent an angel, and he was the first non-Jewish believer. And so, if I want, so we created these bricks, and they're going to go in your house. You're going to put that up in your house. And every time you look at this, this is a memorial. This is a symbol of what you've done with uh, yourself. So shoulder to shoulder, one line, please. One line, Heidi, can you help me? Run and make everybody go. So I'm going to count. I'm going to count. Let's go down this way a little bit further. A little bit further. Here we go. This is awesome. Further, 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 further. Good. Shoulder to shoulder. Heidi, shoulder to shoulder. Not two lines, one line. Katie's praying, two, not two I, lines, just one line. to let everyone know, I'm... I don't, I don't say this unless it's true. I, I'm not, I don't make up things. One I'm not line. trying to melt the anointing. But I feel a lot of heat and a lot of, of, of uh, uh, just energy as I'm praying for people. So I know God's really releasing it wow. and blessing them. And so, because God's pleased about when we support the orphans and the widows and the and the trafficked and the prisoner and everything else. So I just want everybody to know that you're really getting something. You might not sense it yet, but you're going to see it. I feel it. And I wouldn't say it unless it was true. Okay, come with Amen. me. We're going to start down oh, here. I already started oh, at the end. You already? If I missed anybody, I'll come back and okay. get you, but I've already made this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the count. Uh, the largest we did was with Patricia King. How many of you remember the big women on the front lines? That was in Amy Semple McPherson's uh, in Los Angeles. You remember that? That was about two years ago. We had five ministries or more co talking about the children at risk, and 270 women came forward. 270 women was $270,000 they raised, and the women, the mothers gave to the children at risk around the world. It was phenomenal. So we're going to count off. Okay, are you ready? Remember, every count represents a child. Are you ready? Here we go. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Let's give thanks for that. That's awesome. That's a beautiful thing, guys. That's a beautiful thing. 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000, 15,000, 16,000, 17,000. 18,000, 19,000, $20,000. Praise the Lord, you all. Praise the Lord. All of this is going to the children. 
21,000, 22,000, 23,000, 500 each, 24,000, 25,000, 26,000, 27,000. Come on, praise God. Is that not incredible? That's incredible. That's incredible. That's a beautiful thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is Katie's going to continue ministering. And Stephen, you're going to take the whole crowd right through the doors. We're going to process. Make sure you have your phone number, email, everything. Let the uh, checkers check it. Uh, you can do it in five months, ten months, whatever you're doing. And again, we totally understand this is unto the Lord. And whatever your situation is, you're not under yoke on anything. This is free will to the Lord. So we want you to know that. God bless you. Go through there. Amen. And so we're going to receive now the ushers, the rest of ushers are going to receive. You can take out your envelopes. The rest of this is just going if directly to If I miss somebody, come over here. Or if I miss somebody, come over here if I missed come, you. Come into the foyer, uh, in the foyer. Okay, so we're going to receive from uh, the rest. I've recently missed anyone else come back or, or wave your hand at me. Okay. So, Okay, so okay. if you have an envelope there, if you want to give to this offering tonight, we're going to receive that. So, Father, thank you so much for each one of these ones, these 28,000. We thank you for their, their sacrifice. We thank you that tonight we've remembered the widow, the orphan. We bless each one that's given so uh, fantastically, so uh, sacrificially. And, Lord, we pray that you will meet each one where they are and that you would cause us to prosper that we could be such a blessing we ask this in jesus name amen so if you're giving tonight checks are made out to be a hero uh visa mastercard and you can just get ready ushers are going to receive that lead us in a praise song y'all something that just gives great thanks to god because we saved 28 lives tonight 28 lives
We'll never stop loving you. We'll never stop loving you. We'll never stop loving you. All this is for you. All this is for you. God. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, you may be seated. Some are going to be coming in. Well, we had a great day today. Uh, John Perk shared. All this is uh, live on stream. You go onto Hopewell uh, website, and you'll be able to uh, uh, get a link to the messages. Uh, another joy I had today is I, I'm, I'm doing a podcast. We're expecting and believing that we're in another Jesus movement all over the earth. Come on. All over the earth. The gospel is growing and bearing fruit. Paul said, even as it is amongst you. The first night I, I shared how the expansion, what's taking place right now around the earth. And uh, one of the ways that we're getting prepared for that is I felt burdened to gather the, the conversion stories of the generals of the faith. So we're getting the conversion stories, one-hour podcasts of, you know, Lou Engel, Che On, Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson, Chris Volatin, Randy Clark, Georgian Banoff, uh, Lance Walnow, Mike Sharona, Patricia King, uh, everybody. We have all these testimonies. They're one hour. We've recorded them all, and we're going to be loading them up on our, on our website, WesleyStacyCampbell.com. Just look us up. Google, you'll see our thing. And you can listen to them free. One-hour podcast. That'll, they're incredible. They're absolutely incredible. Today, I, I, I interviewed Katie Souza. Wow. Wow. What a story. I, I had never heard her story before. I, I saw her preach. I saw the power. I saw her uh, uh, faith, but I never knew her story. So that's going to be coming up in the weeks to come. Every two weeks, we're putting up a new one. So you tell your friends and uh, listen to these stories. They're going to increase your faith. And let's get ready to be people who know how to share our testimony. The Apostle Paul met Jesus on his way to kill Christians, and he was forever changed. And for the rest of his life, whenever he was in a, a, a situation, he said, let me tell you about my testimony. And I believe it's time again that we start knowing our testimony and releasing stories of how we met Jesus Christ. I'm being so stirred up. Come on. I'm, I was so stirred up just listening to Katie. Going, By the time we finished the hour, I'm going, no, really? Whoa, my eyes are as big as saucers. You know, she has to get some rest. She's excited. I'm excited. We can't come down. So you want to listen to these testimonies. It's awesome. So let's give a great big uh, warm welcome for Katie Souza. Amen. Another break. All right. All right. Another break. Awesome. Come on. Amen. Uh, let me give these away really quick. How's everybody doing? Yeah? Did you guys get desnakeified last night? Did you? A lot of people are shaking their heads. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, fun. All right, so uh, let me give some help away. Uh, if you're looking for soul healing and even about snakes and uh, all kinds of things, time travel, this is like a collection of my favorite soakers. Um, what it is is just when these were, these soakers were birthed out of my own need. 
I would have issues happening, sickness in my body, or an issue with my attitude, or you know, issues in money, or whatever. And what I did is I would create these soakers um, built on the need. I would have like an issue with being bitter or whatever else, and I'd find every scripture I could, and I would build it on one disc, and then I would soak to it. I would play it and like play it in my car and pray along with it or play it over myself at night while I slept, and then I'd wake up healed. And I had that happen so many times. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've woken up healed as I've been soaking to one of these discs. It's basically the scripture because the Bible says, you know, God sent his word in and healed us. So the word heals us. It has power. It has power to do all kinds of things in our lives. And so I built these discs around with decrees on scripture, and I soaked to them, and they're about different topics and different issues. And then I decided, well, let me put my top four favorites, you know, in one pack, and uh, that will really help somebody. So this is called Drenched in the Spirit, and I want somebody who's willing to, like, play this at night while you're sleeping and, and get healed. Wesley, can you give it to somebody? You know, that... Yeah, who does need healing, amen? Yeah, I want to give it to somebody who really needs healing. Amen. Okay, and then this is called Soul Crossing, Taking Your Promised Land. Uh, I, th- I can't even explain this thing, but honestly, if you look at the language in Joshua 3 about them crossing over the Jordan in the Promised Land, it says that Joshua said, I'm going to do miracles among you tomorrow. Get ready. And the word among means the mind the reasoning and the will, that's your soul. So he's saying as the ark crosses before you, the power of the ark is not only just going to stop the water from flowing and back it up all the way to Adam, it's going to heal you. It's going to do a wonder among you. It's going to heal you in your soul so you can take the promised land because believe it or not, you can't take your promised land if you're a wounded mess. So God had to get them healed in here so they could cross over and take their inheritance, amen. And I built a soaker that goes with that, and man, when I soak to that, like I get a major miracle. The soaker's inside of it, the teachings with it, and the soaker's inside with it. Okay, please do. Okay. Amen. Okay, so are you ready for more? All right, me too. Let's watch some videos just to prime our faith pump to get uh, miracles. Amen. Can we watch videos in the back there? Yeah, this guy punched somebody out, and he his nu- knuckle shattered, uh, and his body absorbed it. Let's have the volume. You actually felt a knuckle, and there was not a knuckle there. So he'd actually lost a knuckle. Okay, so now I want you to touch that knuckle now. Does it feel different from the one that you first saw? Yeah, there's actually a knuckle there. I don't feel like it's a gap in there anymore. <laughs> I saw angels coming down carrying a platter of body now. parts, and one of them had a knuckle on it. Come on now. And the angel put that knuckle in that guy's hand. God can do anything. Now, come over here, Rich. So you didn't even feel anything. You, I asked you earlier if you even felt anything while it happened. Uh, it just, like, appeared. Were you surprised? Yes, very surprised because it's been so long. It's been, like, six years. Six years without a knuckle. Yeah. How does that how did that affect you? Did it affect your ability to use your fingers or? No, it just felt weird. Like, like it was there, but it really wasn't. So. Like your fingers are floating or something? Or? No, like. I, the, I mean, I don't know how that works. So. When it was gone, like it felt like it was still there, but I just never paid attention to it because I knew it was gone. So when you were cra- you said you're cracking your knuckles, and then you noticed it was there. I mean, what did that feel like, that moment right then? I was scared. You were scared? <laughs> Why were you scared? Tell me. It was just something different. Like, I didn't expect that to ever have it back because I went to the hospital and they said there's nothing they can do. The hospital told you there was nothing you could do about that knuckle? Yeah, because it went all in my hand, so they couldn't just reconstruct it. Like, they could have put metal in it, but I told them, no, nah, it's not worth it. But God, eh? The hospital can't do it, but God can do it, amen. Can we give God a big praise? That's so awesome. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Yeah, you guys, make sure you go look, and you look. He has scars on his knuckles, and he has witnesses. Does anybody else in here know you and know that you don't? Yes, you know him? Turn it up a little bit. What's your name, sir? Tim. So, Tim, 
did you see the knuckle or feel the knuckle before the miracle? Yes, he, showed, he told me about the knuckle a couple weeks ago, and I didn't, you know, I had to check it out and feel it. So you did check it out and feel it? There was no knuckle there. There was no knuckle there. Now, I want you to feel it now. Oh, I can tell you, because I checked it last night. <laughs> and there was just a little nub there last night. There was just a little nub there last night. Now, that's before the meeting? Last night, after the meeting. After the meeting. Oh, there, that was a nub. And so you're saying it's grown since it came in. Last night, it was as big as this little finger knuckle. And now, it's a big knuckle now. Now it's full grown. So you're saying it came in as a nub and it grew. Yes. Yeah. Are you concurring with that? Yeah. yeah. It came in as a little nub and it grew. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting twist. Wow. So, you're, so you are validating and witnessing that this man has had a, a real miracle. Come on, let's give God a big praise. Come on. Go ahead to the next one. For over 15 years, I suffered no, from a not very it. painful. We watched that last night. The next one, uh, it should say something about uh, braces and cane. Braces and cane or something, maybe. You see that one? Or Gunther, the bullet, or there's a lot. Pick one. Uh, do where's Heidi? Tell us your name. Gunther. What happened? Uh, last night I came. I had two orthopedic braces on both knees and walked with a cane. Oh, uh oh! I have to read his lips. Uh, yeah, uh, he came with tooth orthopedy brace, braces and a cane. He had broken his leg three times in a month, and they didn't know why, so they took an MRI, and his bones looked like spider webs on the MRI because they were so thin and shardy and fragmented. Uh, he had bad knees, but the doctor said, I can't put a knee replacement in because your bones can't hold it. And they tested him, they didn't know what it was. Are we going to have audio any moment now so I can stop the narrative? Or, Okay. So they couldn't figure out what it was, right? And so he had to wear these braces and a cane because his legs were so fragile and his bones were so fragile. And then he came to the meeting, and when he was leaving the meeting, he was walking to his car with his braces and cane and all that, and he noticed all the pain was gone. So he decided to go to the hotel, take off his braces, and have his cane and see if the pain was still there. And it wasn't. He could walk around. And then he decided to try something that he couldn't do. The doctor had asked him, can you do a squat? And he goes, are you kidding? That's impossible. I can't do a squat. And so he decided to try the squat in his hotel room to see if he could do it. And then he, he did it. Watch. He's going to squat for you right here. <laughs> and what happened to our audio? It's not as exciting. Well, it's probably because it's going slow or something, but anyway, he, he pulls a squat for us, and everybody screams. Yeah, everybody in the meeting screamed. Uh, yeah, okay, right, yeah. Right, I, I mean, he walked up those stairs without the braces and the cane, and he walked up just fine. He pulled another squat later on in the interview. It was very amazing. I mean... They couldn't even diagnose what he had. Broke his leg three times, one month. Okay, so stop it, and I'll just, well, if we're having problems, I'll just talk about. Okay, so in that same meeting, another lady came up. She had gotten in a skiing accident. I'm sorry, I like to show the video so you know I'm not making this stuff up. Um, you know, she got into a skiing accident, and she had a metal pin this long in this leg right here, all the way up the leg, and across the hip like this from the skiing accident. And uh, I had a word about metal uh, being healed in the meeting. And so she came up and, and uh, I said, well, how do you feel? She goes, well, I, 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 I'm able to move now. 
I had restricted movement, and I'm like, show me how you can move. And she plopped down on stage. This lady was 76 years old. She plopped down on stage, took her leg, and touched her face with her knee. And I'm like, give me that anointing. Okay, that's how healed she was. And she actually Coach shows it. There she Nadine, is. Nadine, what happened? I broke my leg and my hip four ways in a ski accident two years ago. Turn four it out. ways. A pin from my um, top of my femur to my knee. And a pin that long? A, and rod. And a rod. Yes. And a, pin, a rod that goes across my hip where it broke twice. So you broke your hip twice. And you broke the, and the, broke the femur twice? Femur twice, yes, ma'am. So you got the metal in the hip. And the leg. And the, and the long rod. Is that, it's a long rod. Long rod. Lots wow. Of Lots of pins. Okay, so what did it do to you? Did it restrict your movement? Was there pain? Um, there was a lot of pain. Mostly I started getting numb um, all the way down my left foot, and I stopped, started losing feeling in my foot. So you had numbness going down the leg and in the foot. How long ago did that happen? Two years ago. Two years. How long has the numbness been? Um, about two years. Okay. Yeah. Is, is there also pain with the, numb um, with the numbness? Um, there is cramping. Cramping. And is that all the time, the numbness and the, and the cramping? Or? It comes and goes. It comes and goes. The, uh, then is the numbness constant? Um, pretty much. I've been being treated for it. Yeah. And, and what, does it restrict your movement, the metal? Um, it does on my left side. So what happened tonight? Um, well, I just danced a lot. Really? So I, you look joyful, so I'm, I'm assuming you normally wouldn't be able to dance a lot. Um, I'm able to dance. I actually stretch a lot, and um, I just sat in my chair, and I put my, um, my leg on my knee and pulled up as far as I could pull, and I had no pain. Here he goes. Whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> 76, hello. Okay, I'm just thinking like this, but I wasn't thinking like that. Give me that anointing quick in the name of Jesus. Okay. So, wow, you just put your knee up to your face. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, now, normally if you did that, what would happen? Um, I'd be restricted. I couldn't go that far, and it would hurt, and it would be constricted. So you couldn't go that far, and it would hurt. And I've also, I also stopped skiing because I, was, um, I didn't want to be numb while I was cold. And so that makes total sense. You don't want to be numb while you're cold, so you don't go skiing. Okay. So I have a vision of, um, I'm 71. I have a vision of skiing again. <laughs> 71, sorry. A 71-year-old just put her knee to her face. Okay. Let's give God a big praise, amen. I'll tell the rest of the stories. That's good. The same meeting, this people came, this guy came up and hijacked my stage. He comes up and he goes, I think I had, I'm missing some metal. I go, oh, good. He goes, no, bad. I go, what do you mean? And he, he brought up his ex-wife on stage. They had gotten a divorce. And he brought her up on stage with him. And he told her, I want you to come up with me while I testify. So I go, what do you mean it's bad that you're missing some metal? Because I'm thinking he has got a metal miracle, right? And he goes, well, that's because it's this kind of metal. And he gets down on his knees and he opens up a ring box and he reproposes to his ex-wife. Yeah. He hijacks my stage. It was so cute, right? So he reproposes. She says yes, right? So they're super excited. And then he calls us, like, I don't know, three days later after we got home. And he goes, guess what? He goes, when I go into my work every day, I go through a metal detector. And I wish he was on there. We don't have him. I guess not. But we go, I go through a metal detector, and it goes off because I have metal in my ankle. And I said, okay. And he said, well, when I went through to work on Monday and I went through the metal detector, it didn't go off. The, the metal's gone. It's missing out of my ankle. <laughs> right? It was amazing. And then this other lady, she, she came up in another meeting, and she said, um, I split my arm bone in half. Can you imagine? And she goes, and they used three deck-sized screws to screw it together. She goes, and ever since then, I've had, I know, extraordinary pain. And she goes, I can, I can only lift my arm like this high, and it hurts really bad. And she goes, and I haven't been able to put up my hair because I can't lift up my arm to put my hair up. So I go, so what happened? She goes, so. And she sits there, and she puts her arm all the way up like this, and she puts her hair back. She complete freedom from those screws in her arm. 
It was amazing, right? And then, um, oh my gosh, I could just go on and on. I, I don't even know if I can remember them all. Oh, the lady with the splits. Oh my gosh. So this other lady, I had a word of knowledge about something. I forget what, but she got a healing. She had metal in her hip and she couldn't like barely stretch or move the hip because there was so much pain from the metal. And then she goes, while I was worshiping, after you gave the word of knowledge, I was worshiping. And then the Lord told me this. He said, you've been healed. And she says, really? And he goes, yeah, go over in the corner there and do the splits. And she's like, what? You want me to go do the splits? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I want you to, I want to prove that you did it. So she went out by herself and she could do the splits. So she comes and she tells me, and she, I said, go up on stage and show everybody. So she comes up on stage and she does the splits like twice. Right? She's so drunk in the spirit, she almost falls over. And then she says, I'm 57 years old, and I just did the splits. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm impressed. But, I mean, okay, then we had this other lady. Um, I only had half an hour to do this one meeting. It was crazy. Uh, they said, you have 30 minutes, exactly, and you have to share your testimony, do an altar call, and then, when I, and then that's it. And I'm like, no, I can't just share my testimony and do an altar call. I have to work miracles. I said, so I have to share my testimony, do an altar call and work miracles in 30 minutes? Oh, my God. So I'm having them cue me every five minutes so I know where I'm at, right? And I actually did it. And miracles broke out. It was amazing. I didn't do it. The Holy Spirit did it. And it was so awesome. Um, and then I, afterwards, I get off stage, and they drag this lady over. They didn't drag her. She actually ran over to see me. And we have her on the video. I don't know what she's called. I forget. But... She had been born with a rare eye disease where the eye was completely dead. And uh, she had gone to a lot, lot of doctors, and they didn't know what to diagnose it as. And the last ophthalmologist she went to, which was a doctor slash ophthalmologist, he said, I can fix you. I can fix it. Watch. And so he said, let me take a picture of your eye. So he took a picture of her eye with this special camera. And after he took a good look at it, he goes, oh, no, girl, I, I'm sorry. I can't fix you. That eye's dead. So she has this doctor's report of her eye being totally dead and a picture of it's just totally gray and black looking. She showed me the picture. And she goes, ever since you're up on stage and you're preaching the message, she goes, now I'm starting to see. She goes, I can see right now. And she described me. She goes, I see the outline of your hair and the color of your hair and uh, your shirt. She goes, I'm starting to see. And I said, oh, my God, that's awesome, right? So then I left, and then I ended up coming back to that state, I don't know, a couple months later, I guess. I forget what, a couple, a few months later. And she was there. It was so cute. She came up, and I didn't recognize her because she had bought a hair piece, right, this wavy, beautiful hair piece. She came up, and she goes, she goes, um, she goes, you don't recognize me. And I said, no. She goes, that's because I bought me some hair, $17. <laughs> and I went, I grew mine. <laughs> I go, you looking good? She goes, oh, yeah, thank you. You're looking good, girl. And then, and then she reminded me who she was. I was like, oh, my God, I've been looking for you. And her eye has been, this is what's called a healing compared to a miracle, right? Her eye had been getting progressively better, and now she could say, I see your hand all the way. I see your mic in your hand. I see the whole everything. Her eye had been getting better and better and better. So that I tell you that story to be encouraged that when you pray for somebody, and even if they say, well, I feel the pain's a little bit less, get excited. Don't go, oh, no, you didn't get all the way healed. You need to get excited because they'll come back to you in two months and say, guess what? I'm totally healed. You know what I mean? Keep praying and keep believing, and, and, and it's going to happen. Amen. Progressive healing. I had this guy that I went into prison. He broke his tailbone twice. Going, He fell in chow hall in prison. And, you know, I tell you what, you don't want to get sick in prison because medical there is scary. Scary. My friend split her head open once, and I, I took her to medical. This is when I was inside. I took her to medical, and she came out. We laughed our guts out because what they had done is they had just swabbed it a little bit, and then they used her hair to tie a bandage onto her head, and when she came out, it was rolling around and bouncing around like a curler. It wasn't even, like, on her cut. And we were like, oh, my God. But that's what they'll do for you in medical, in prison. So he broke his tailbone twice, and... It was crazy. They said, well, we're going to put you in a body cast. But they couldn't find a flexible one that would enable him to sleep. So you know what their answer was to helping his tailbone heal properly? They just didn't do anything. Right. They didn't do anything. So here he is twice. And now he's walking around, you know, in agony with this broken tailbone. And it heals wrong. It heals so wrong that he walks sideways. And so now all the inmates call him Sidewinder. 
That's his new nickname. He's the sidewinder. Hey, sidewinder, what's up? You know, because he's walking sideways because his tailbone healed wrong. So he comes to the meeting. He totally gets a miracle. Jesus gives him a, a Holy Spirit adjustment. He wakes up. He said, I had no pain last night. I feel like I'm 20 years old. I got right up out of bed. And he goes, and look, I'm walking straight. And he was walking straight as an arrow. He walked away showing me how straight he was walking. I was like, whoa, shake it. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. God actually readjusted his bones, amen, so that he was straight. I have all this on video. So you can go to my website and you can see these videos. This is amazing. I mean, I had a guy that got hit in the eye with a bat when he was like 12 years old. He was an inmate at a prison. Got hit in the eye with a bat and it detached his retina. So when the retina started to heal and reattach, what happened was this big scar formed on his eye. So he was totally blind in that eye except for the very edge of the circle where the scars stopped. So he only would see the edge of the eyesight in that eye. And he had that like his whole life. Now, I didn't know he was there in the meeting. I had never met him before or anything. And I had a word of knowledge. I said, if you, somebody here, if you cover your right eye and you keep looking through your left eye, your vision's going to clear up. And so he did that. He sat there and he did that. And the scar got smaller and smaller and smaller until it totally disappeared. And he could totally see. Yeah. It's so cute because he came up to me afterwards and he said, you know, when I first came here, I wanted nothing to do with you or God or this meeting. But now I'm in. <laughs> so God healed his heart. Amen. Too. It was awesome. I had this one guy that he had gotten, when he got arrested, a cop got behind him and uh, took his baton and put him in what's called a deadlift. That's when you get behind a, a suspect and you put the baton underneath their throat like this. And as you're lifting up on the baton, you put your knee in their back and push down. So you go, mm. So when he did that, it ripped that guy's larynx all the way down his chest. Right. It was very painful. And what happened is it caused the left side of his sinus system, his nostril, to close down. He couldn't breathe through the left side. And uh, he was listening to the message. And he prayed the prayers, and right then, he all of a sudden realized for the first time in like 10 or 11 years, he could breathe through the left side of his nose. He came up and demonstrated it. It was amazing. It was so amazing. We've seen some amazing things. A lot of metal disappearing, a lot of people getting miracles, a lot of breakthroughs. It's super fun. Amen? I say all these things to encourage you to lift up your faith. A lot of you need a miracle. Amen? God wants to give it to you. Amen? And so I release the angel tonight to minister to you while you're listening to the message so that you'll be healed tonight even while during the preach happens. Amen? And that the thing you've been battling with is going to go away. You're going to see a breakthrough. You're going to see a miracle. Amen? In Jesus' name. Amen? I just saw a rubber stamp hit a piece of paper, and it says all cleared on it. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough. You've been waiting. I don't know if it's in the court or it, it's you've been waiting for something to go through, move through, and heaven just stamped it, that it's good to go and it's all clear. Amen. I, I see somebody's been having pain in your hamstring. I think it's the right side. And the Lord's healing that right now. Who is that? Is that you, ma'am? Stand up. Is that you, sir? Stand up. Both of you stand up. Do you feel the pain now, ma'am? Do you feel the pain? Did you feel it when you came in? 
okay, when you do, you, when you do that, do you feel the pain? Because it's gone. It's gone, yeah, because you've been healed. Amen. And you, ma'am? Pain's gone. It's pain gone. You've been healed too. Amen. Bless you. I bless you. Angel, I just healed you. Amen. Somebody, you've been having fading eyesight also? I think it's your right eye. Is that you, ma'am? Stand up. Is it in your right eye? Right eye? You're not sure what eye it is? Can you tell me? Can you? Who has fading eyesight in the right eye? Is that you, sir? Who is? Is that you? Is that you in the back? You have fading eyesight in the right eye? That's you? Okay. Anybody else have fading Both eyesight? And in the back, you, it's uh, on your right eye. Okay, stand up. Is it the right eye? Hers are both. I mean, if you want to stand up and receive it for its both eyes, go ahead. But I have a word for that. Okay, so just stay there. <coughs> Is that the angel hmm. minister right now? Yeah. Angel of the Lord. Healing. Thank you, Lord. Just receive. Don't try to pray or anything else. Just receive. Mm Okay, now, if you could check your vision, is there a way that you can tell? I mean, I don't know if you can look up at the screen or something, or maybe we could put words up on the screen or something, or if you could check somehow and see if there's an improvement in your eyesight. Just keep on testing. Yeah, maybe look at your phone, whatever it takes for you to test your eyesight. What's that? Do you have a, a, any movement? Still the same level? Okay. How about you in the back, sir? You're checking your phone. I see that. How about you? It feels clear on the right side or the left side? Okay. Feels clear. And you, ma'am? It's better? Okay. Like, how much better? Let's see. You say clear. How much clearer? It's not as foggy. Okay, so is that floaters too or just fog? There's, there's a floater here, but it's not as foggy. Though. Not as foggy? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And left. you, ma'am? Yeah. It's clear? Mm -hmm. Between 1 and 10, how much clear? About 5%. Uh, yeah, here comes the anointing right now. I feel the anointing right now hitting right now. So you should be getting even more right now. Feel the anointing right now. It was about 75%. Feel about 75% better. 75% now. Yeah. See, it's the anointing hit just right now. Okay, yeah. the anointing's hitting right now. So you should be having a movement right now. It's either that or a hot flash, but I think it's the anointing. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, ma'am, in the front in the blue shirt? So you had pain in your eye, pain in the eye. Between one and 10, what was your level of pain? An eight pain, and what's the pain now? About a two. About a two, that's good, eight to two. Okay, just stay right there, it's probably gonna go all the way to zero. We just decree all the way to zero. Okay, and then uh, anybody else, how about you, sir? You said it was fuzzy. Do you have any change? Come up here. I have the anointing on me right now. Okay, just stand right there. Just receive. Don't pray. Okay. Yeah, your soul's being healed right now, and your eyes being healed right now. In Jesus' name, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus.
How about you in the back there? Keep, just stay right there. How about you in the back there? Any movement? Still, uh, not, not completely. No. Any movement? You say not completely. Does that mean you had some movement, but it's not it's all? It's hard to tell because it comes and goes. And so. It comes and goes. How is it coming or going right now? <laughs> well, my eye, gets, sometimes it gets blurry and sometimes it don't. It's, it's like so what is it right now? Well, right now it looks like it's better. Okay. So we'll believe that something's happening, man. How about you, ma'am? How are you doing? It's clear. My, my test is on the computer. That's when it really gets blurry. When Can I you have get your phone out and look at your phone? There. That doesn't help. Okay, how about you, ma'am? The, the vision is clear, but I still have the floaters. But your vision is getting clearer? Yes. So it's happening right now. How about you? Oh, yeah, it is clear. Yeah. Yeah, it's clear. You're 10% now. Well, 10% yeah. is better than 0%. It, it, it is. It's gone. It's wow. gone. And how about the lady in the blue? Look, I'm stepping out because I don't really know anything about the lady in the blue. Look, I'm stand, stepping out because I don't really uh, you know, uh, have a word of knowledge. Or Check just, on this one. Okay, go ahead. It, it's clearer. It, it is. is. You're yeah. looking at the computer now. I'm looking at the computer and I can see it. You well, can see that's it. That's without the glasses. Let's see. Okay, without the glasses. Well, let's take off the glasses. No, take off the glasses. No, because usually it's blurry with the glasses. Oh, usually it's blurry with the glasses. How is it now? Yeah, and it's my prescription way. I can see clear. I okay. See it real clear. There you go. Okay, that's good. And lady in the blue. Yeah, it doesn't hurt as much anymore. No, it's about, still about a two. Okay, you're going to be a zero by the time you at least wake up tomorrow. Okay, I claim that. You claim it? I do. You believe it, everybody? Yeah. Okay, man. So now let's pray for these people that are remaining. We have two people, three people that got healed. You, did you have say you had 75%, ma'am? Did you say 75% clear? Yes? Let's give God a praise for that. Okay. Now let's pray for these remaining people. Ready? Just say, Lord, we send the Holy Spirit and power to these people right now. They're going to get totally healed. They're excellent of soul. They're healed in their body. We put the blood of Jesus on their eye gate, and we command it to be lifted up. Say, be ye lifted up. Be ye lifted up. Be ye lifted up by the blood of Jesus and doing his power. Flow into that gate. Flow into that gate. Flow into that gate. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now how do you? How you doing? How you doing? Maybe another five percent. So you're fifteen percent right now. Next time, I guess. You have cataracts, is that what you said? Not anymore. You're getting healed. Okay? All right. And how are you doing in the back there? You're, you're a little temp, yeah, okay. I'm not sure yet. You're not, you're not sure yet? <laughs> it's okay, I know. It's hard to, to give testimony when you're not sure yet. All right, that's fine. One more time, ready? Jesus prayed twice for people, ready? All the way, Lord. Yeah. This man's going to be totally free of all cataracts. Yes. And he's going to see very clearly. Yes. And he's getting his miracle now. And the power is flowing into him. Power is flowing into you. And he's having a total breakthrough. Total In Jesus' breakthrough. name. Amen. Amen. Now, how are you, now how are you doing? Take those stinking glasses off. Well, pull them off your face. All right. So put up that word thing that was up there, guys. Again, you took it down. Can you read that little number at the bottom there? Yeah, okay, can you read that? I see words, but nothing distinctive. Do you see them better than you normally would? It's hard to say. I couldn't tell you yes or no. What kind of witness are you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I got lots of power in me right now, so something's happening to you. I see letters. Um, not distinctive yet. Would you normally be able to see even the letters that far away? It's pretty far away, so is yeah. that? 
I still can't see him. I mean, I just see. When you put your glasses on, can you see him? I was having a haze. I, coming over here tonight, it was getting, as the sun goes down, you know, I, I'm like, I, I asked my wife, I said, what's the name of that street sign? So, yeah. She's well, fine. do you see any improvement? Oh, you yeah. You told me 50. Oh, yeah. Now he says, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you see improvement? <laughs> yes. How much? 15, 20, 25? I, I would say another up to 25, 30%. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> okay. So you feel you've improved 25 to 30%? Amen. Amen. Okay, I want you to just stand there so the angel yes, can Yes, I can even see more exit. I could see, before I just saw red. So now you can see the, the actual oh, words on. exit. Yes. You can. That's pretty far away. Really? Yeah. You could only see red before. Yeah, pretty much it was just, because I knew it was exit because, you know, that's where they have emergency. But now you can actually read it. Yes. Well, look at that. You yeah. think that's an improvement, huh? Yes. You're not deaf too, are you? No, I have okay. great hearing. <laughs> I have great hearing. As one senses is poor, the other is, is better. <laughs> Don't ask me about my smelling. It's, it's shot from spraying too many chemicals on trees. Okay, well, let's ask God to heal that too, amen. Well, we just decree you're going to be healed my of eyes. that. Is that okay? Yeah, your eyes and your nose. Let's get it all. Come on. Don't, don't chintz out on God. God's not a chintzy <laughs> tightwad. He doesn't say, no, I don't get the nose. You just get the eyes. I'll be good as my dog, I guess. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look, you, get, you said 25 to 30 percent. You can read that exit sign. That's about, oh, what, 100 feet away? What do you think, Wesley? What's that? That's, he's looking over there. How much are those exit signs? 100 feet? What is it? 100 yard dash? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah? Is it still growing? Still, still, still changing? Uh, not really. <laughs> yeah, well, you're still, you, you've improved. Do you think he's improved? <laughs> Let's give God a praise for that improvement. Okay, you're going to keep going. You're like that girl that came to see me, man. It's just going to keep going. Yeah? Okay, let's give God a big praise for that. Okay. I'm just trying to take my time to see what God wants to do. You don't mind, do you? Uh, Katie? Yeah. She said. Uh, the floater, I had the floater over here, too. Yeah. It's gone. The floater's and, gone. Yeah, and it's, it's clear. It's all clear. Yeah. Okay, awesome. You can see a difference. Yeah, I can see a difference. It, and it just slowly by slowly, it just, like, evaporated. Evaporated? Like it just disappeared? Yeah. Was it a big honking floater or what? No. No, but. But you could find it and you knew where it was. Yeah. yeah. You could, so that's gone, and yeah. you're seeing clearer on the computer. You, we yeah. opened the computer, and you could read yeah. it. Yeah. No blurry. How do you no feel? Blurry. Oh, I feel great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. How's that pain over there? Is your pain all the way gone yet? Good. Are you still at your two? Don't try to make me happy. Okay, good. Still at two. You're two. Still at two. Yeah, you're going to go down all the way down. Why do you have that pain, do you know? Yeah, I have very extremely dry, dry eye that um, dry the eye. doctor has given me two prescriptions um, that don't work yet. And that's why I wear these glasses all the time because there's a lot of pain. Yeah, okay, dryness. your pain. I decree all pain gone and everything else. You went from an eight to a two, right? Mm -hmm. So that's su su pretty substantial. So I decree it's all going to disappear. And moisture into your eyes, I command. Right. Moisture into your eyes, amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, amen. I'm just seeing what else, you know, God wants to do right now. If not, I'm going to preach, and you're okay with that too, aren't you? Okay. It's a little hard here, I'll be honest. It's a little hard here. It's okay, though, because that's why we're here. We're here to plow and open up for the church so the church can walk in miracles. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Well, I know that wasn't a hot flash because as soon as I let go of that guy, my, my temperature dropped about 10 degrees. <laughs> I felt like I was going to have to start mopping. <laughs> You're getting healed, sir, wherever you went to. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. Yes? My eyes have been changing. You know where I can't, I can't read up close and stuff like that. So how are they feeling and now? Well, I have mean, you, have you tested them? I, I, I know when you get older, your eyes change like that. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Uh, <laughs> well, looking out further away, 
everything looks a lot crisper. You know? Looks a lot crisper now. Yeah, and and um, like I've noticed lately, my eyes sometimes get blurry. Like yeah. But I've also how are they feeling now? Uh, good. Yeah. yeah. You have, do you feel a change? Yeah, like everything's like really crisp. Everything's really like, crisp. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Would it normally be a little bit blurry? Well, it was because I've noticed like through the meeting, you know, but like after that, I was like looking at stuff and everything looked really crisp. Yeah, because see, more know. than the people that stood up are getting healed. Anybody else notice any change in their eyeballs? Healing. Anybody else notice any change in their eyeballs? Yes, you, ma'am? So I can't, I'm d doubling on him. I am frustrated because I'm reading, have to wear readers all the time. And yeah. I'm so frustrated. But I picked this, the back of this up, and I would never be able to read this without my readers, and I fully read it. <laughs> so you fully read the back Just of that now? CD cover? Yes. Yeah. Just now, huh? It's impossible to read that. And yeah, I, I was going to say, that's my CD cover, and, and I don't think I could read it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying you actually looked at because that's CD. I was, like, I was like, I'm not pulling my glasses out. I'm going to read this whole thing, and I did. You read <laughs> the whole thing? Yeah. Just now? Yes. Now, tell me, that would that have been impossible for you? That, yes, yes. It would have been impossible for yes. you? Yes. I, I would be like, <laughs> what's that? Say? No, I just can't. Okay. And especially with the light and the glare, but it was able. Yeah. You were and able I, to read it. You were just doing. I closed my eyes. I'm like, I'm receiving this. Okay. <laughs> see. I am so sick of wearing glasses. <laughs> Who else is sick of wearing glasses? Okay. So come on, <laughs> let's just let's just simmer here for a little minute because look, two other people got healed. This lady's been healed. Uh, she's down to a two from an eight. This gentleman is up 30 percent. He can see the exit sign and read it. Okay. This lady lost a floater. And she can read the computer. So I, the, let's just simmer here for a minute. Lord, I, yeah. I, I ask you to do more. Yeah, more. more. The, as faith rises in the room because people are getting healed, I'd ask that you would do more. More. And that more people would see clearly. Floaters would disappear. Pain would leave. Sharpness would come in. Blurriness would leave. Clarity and be able to see far and near both, far and near sighted both. That you'd be able to see both 2020 vision. I decree it right now in the name of Jesus, right now for people who want to see and people that have faith to reach out with your faith and grab it in the name of Jesus right now. And that you would be totally healed in Jesus' name right now. And I release the angel to go around and minister to you even more. Right now, I release that angel to put, it, put the angel to work. I hear the name Bobby. Bobby? Anybody here named Bobby? Is that you right there, ma'am? Are you a Bobby? Yeah, come up here, Bobby. That's my husband's name, too. Are you Bobby also? No. Oh, she's coming? Mm -hmm. Do you have grandkids? You have a granddaughter? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the name? Melody. Mel Melanie? Melody? Melody? You, does that mean anything to you? No. Nothing? Sure. I ask people all the time, and then uh, you know, by the end of the session, they come back. Oh yeah, I just remembered. I had the word bird bath the other day. I get strange words, bird bath, and nobody answered. And I was like, I know somebody's in here. You take a bird bath. You do. You take a bird bath because you're afraid of something in your water. And I found out this woman, she came into the meeting with rubber boots, a mask, uh, wrapped up with all kinds of stuff. Totally has a disease, paranoid about stuff touching her, and she takes a bird bath because she's afraid, but she wouldn't come up really? and get healed. I'm not saying you are denying the word Melanie, but yeah, she wouldn't come up because she was too embarrassed to let everybody know. She'd rather stay in her sickness than come up and, and let me pray for her. Amen. Okay, so Bobby, I wonder what God's doing for you. Hmm. Do you have spine, any problems in your spine? Do you have spinal stenosis? Or do you have any curve? Uh, I have a curve, yeah. You have a curve in your spine? That's mm -hmm. like a spinal stenosis. Yeah, and a... Um, uh-huh, yeah. Uh, military neck. Okay, so I'd only know that if what the Holy Spirit told me, right? Yeah. Yeah, unless I'm a really good guesser. <laughs> okay, which I'm not, so. Okay, so you're going to be healed right now. Yeah, okay? yeah. Right now. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All the pain, all the trauma from having this happen to you your whole life, everything you've gone through, being healed right now, my dunamis power, right now in the name of Jesus, Bobby being healed right now, right now, all that pain, the straightening, the 
the, the perfect curve in the spine, not the over curve, not the curvature, wrong curvature, all the discs being repaired, all the trauma in your soul, all the pain. Right now, the embarrassment, shame, anything else has come from it, whatever caused it in the first place. Holy Spirit, right now, with dunamis power, healing it. An angel touching you right now in Jesus' name. You have a little swelling in your ankles too. It's going to go down. Now in Jesus' name. Now do you feel anything, Bobby? If, if you don't, just tell me the truth. No, I don't it's feel right. anything. Did you have pain when you came up? In my neck, yeah. You had pain in your neck? Yeah. Now I bind pain. Command pain to go right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Shoo, right there. Okay. Now, how's your pain right now? Can you test it for me? Can you move your neck around a little bit? Move it around. Because as you move it around, a lot of times stuff happens. Okay. How does that feel when you move your neck around? Mm, feel the same? Change, yeah. Well, it's happening, though. I feel a lot of power. I'm sweating like a dog. <laughs> Everybody put out your hand. Pray for Bobby. Ready? Say, Lord, fill Bobby with your dunamis power. Cause her to be completely healed in her spine and her body right now and her soul by dunamis power. She would be completely healed right now and all her pain would go in Jesus' name. See, we have to work this miracle. This is one of them. We got to break. We're plowing. We're plowing. Okay. Bobby, do you feel any less pain? Tell me the truth. It's okay. Still stiff, but how's the pain? <laughs> Same level. Same level. Pain. Same level pain? Yeah. Same stiffness. I'm sweating like a dog. Okay, so turn around. Yeah. Right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. My hand is hot because there's power here. So I command your ancient gates to open up by the blood of Jesus. Right now, every block inside you that's blocking the healing right now. I command everything to open up right now in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, all ancient gates be lifted up so the King of Glory can come in right now in Jesus' name. I'm going to work this miracle with the help of Holy Spirit and Jesus and, and Dunas power. Right now, in Jesus' name. How are you feeling now? It's better now? Better. Okay. How much better? You don't feel anything? Okay. We're having to work the miracle. Um, What's that? That's awesome. <laughs> wow. I couldn't put my head back like this. I couldn't put my head back like this without it being really stiff. And it doesn't hurt. Hallelujah. Isn't Come on, let's give the Lord a great big clap. Fantastic, yeah. Bobby. Fantastic. Okay, so, <laughs> so now let's do that, eh? Because what happened was Bobby had a block in her. See, the Bible says, Jesus said, rivers of living water will flow forth from your belly. In the Amplified, it says, rivers of living water will flow forth continuously from your belly, from your innermost being. Okay. Right. Now, think about that. He said continuously. But why are we sick? Why are we getting old? Why do we have sickness and, and why are we aging and all this other stuff if we have rivers of living water flowing, quote, continuously from our innermost being? Well, there must be something stopping down the flow. Okay, well, what is it? See, <coughs> you have dunamis power inside of you. 
the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. Dunamis means the power to perform miracles. It also means excellence of soul. So you should be able to have soul healing every time you're upset, traumatized, whatever. You should be able to release those rivers of living water, that's dunamis, from your innermost being, and you'll be able to get healed in your soul. And then if you have any pain in your body, you should be able to have it fixed because dunamis also means the power to perform a miracle. So if you're commanding that river and you're, you're believing that scripture and saying, yeah, I got rivers of living water that are flowing continuously. Go, go, flow. Go into my arm that hurts, my leg that hurts, my head that hurts, my soul that hurts, all of it. Fix it. Perform a miracle. Make me excellent soul. And it's not happening. It's because there's a gate inside of you that's closed. There's a gate. You have body gates, right? Eye gate, ear gate, nose gate, mouth gate, right? Y'all heard that. But you also have gates in your soul. The word gate actually means the mind to reckon and to calculate. Okay, where do you reckon and calculate? You reckon and calculate in your mind, right? Right? Okay, your mind is part of your soul. So if the word gate means that, that means that there's gates also in your soul, not just in your body. There's gates that lead to your imagination, to your intellect, to your, to your uh, emotions, to your will, and all that stuff. And when those gates are closed, it's like a dam. The rivers of living water can't flow. What would close a gate? Sin closes the gate. Generational stuff closes the gate. Trauma closes the gate. Let's say you watch, uh, you know, pornography. Then that sin will close the gate to your imagination, and that's why it's so hard to quit pornography. Because the dunamis, the rivers of living water, can't flow into your imagination to make you ex and a soul to heal you so you can break that addiction. Did you hear what I said? Did you understand what I said? See, the, it's like, here's the living waters. They flow out of your spirit into and through your soul, then into and through, into and through your soul to make it excellent, then into and through your body to, give, to perform a miracle, and then out your body onto other people. But if the gates are closed, then that power can't get somewhere. Amen? Do you understand? So you want all your gates open so the power can flow through every part of your being, your soul and your body, and then out onto other people. Okay? So let's command our gates to open. Okay? <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> you open them with the blood. Okay? The blood gets rid of any sin or anything that happened at the gates. If you let yourself listen to something, you know, watch a movie with curse words, maybe that closed down your ear gate, and now you can't hear the Lord speak to you. You know, maybe you've been watching movies with foul content or things like that that closed down your eye gate. So you can't see in the prophetic realm. You can't see in the invisible realm or your eyes can't get a miracle healing, okay? Remember, I prayed for his gates to open, and then he got a bigger jump in healing. He went from 5% to 30, okay? So let's, let's pray for the blood of Jesus on all of our gates. Ready? Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. We put the blood of Jesus on every gate. Every on gate. our eye gate. On our eye gate. Our ear gate. Our ear gate. Our mouth gate. Our mouth gate. Our nose gate. Our nose gate. We put it on our feeling gate. Our feeling gate. We put it on the blood of Jesus on our soul gates. On our soul gates. The, um, uh, the gate to our imagination. The gate to our imagination. The gate to our intellect. The gate to our intellect. The gate to our memories. The gate to our memories. The gate to our passions. <coughs> our desires. Our desires. Our subconscious mind. Our subconscious our mind. Our conscious mind. Our conscious mind. The gate to our will. Gate to our will. The gate to every part of our soul, man. Covered with the blood. Covered with the blood. All sin All that sin. happened at the gates is washed away now. We're clean because of the blood of Jesus. Our gates can open right now because of the blood of Jesus. So we do what Psalm 24 says. We command our ancient gates to be lifted up so the king of glory can come in. Lift up ye heads, O you ancient gates. Be ye lifted up, O you everlasting doors, so the king of glory can come in. Lift up your heads, O you ancient gates. Be ye lifted up, O you everlasting doors, so the king of glory can come in. Who is this king of glory? He's the Lord, strong and mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, every soul gate. Lift up your heads, every body gate. Right now, 
so the King of Glory and his rivers of living water can flow into every one of my gates and heal me right now in the name of Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I had this guy come into a meeting. He was swollen, greasy, and gray looking because he had bio backing up in his body because his liver was blocked. He was about to die. And his cousin dragged me to my meeting, dragged him to my meeting. And I walked over. I was preaching on the ancient gates. I walked over and stood right in front of him. I was standing on the stage. And I, and I looked at him and I said, I command that ancient gate inside you right now to be lifted up in Jesus' name. And as soon as I said that, he looked shocked. He went like this. And I was like this at the same time because I saw a vision. I saw a vision of an ancient gate. It didn't swing open. It lifted up because I just commanded it to lift up. That's what Psalm 24 says. It lifted up. And when it did, water like splurted out underneath it and flowed through it. Right? And then I looked at him and he was like wide-eyed. And I go, did you see something? He goes, Yes, he was barely even a believer. I don't think he was even saved at the moment. And he goes, yes, I saw something. I've never seen a vision before ever in my life. I go, what would you see? He goes, I saw this ancient gate, but, and it opened, but it didn't swing open. It lifted up, and then water came through it. He saw the same thing I did. Within 24 hours, he lost 15 pounds of bile weight. Within a week, he lost 15 more, 16 more. I had a lady, she had a detached retina. Detached retina. She knew it because she'd had what happened before, and she woke up in the hotel that morning at the meeting, at the morning of the meeting, and all she could see was a ring of light. That's what happens when the retina detaches. You can't see anything, but you just see the light coming through the edge of the retina. That's why it's detaching. So she thought, should I go to the doctor or should I go to the meeting? I'll go to the meeting. And I was teaching on the ancient gates, and when she commanded the ancient gates and her eyes to open up, the retina reattached by itself instantly. Right, Okay. So, wow, <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Now let's see what else the Holy Spirit wants to do. I'm just, I, I fought all day to figure out what I was going to preach on or anything. I didn't get nothing, so here I am. I'm just, just going with the flow. <laughs> Amen? And, like, we're going to work miracles if we, because we want to break through. Amen? Yeah. Is there anybody here named Karen? 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 Got a couple Karens? Can I have all Karens up here? Got to see a lot of Karens going on here. Uh, so the Karen that has had a lot of mischief in your life. A lot of mischief? Who's had a lot of mischief? Mischief, mischief. Anybody, any of the Karens have some mischief? <laughs> you, Karen? Mischief, mischief? No mischiefs, huh? We'll see about that. How's your eyesight? Because I heard it's being restored right now. How is it? Better. Better? How much? 50%. 50%. What was wrong with it? Um, I have a child that's in state prison right now that has been on the prodigal road for 18 years, and I've cried all my tears away. My eye doctor has told me you have no more tears, and I am dry to the bone. So you actually don't have any tears left. Is that why the glasses, or is the glasses also uh, attached to a vision problem that's not attached to the dry eye thing? Well, when my, my husband died of cancer first, and then my son went off the rails. So between the death of my husband, my first husband from cancer, and the death of my son in a spiritual way, I cried beyond measure, and I just haven't had tears for years. And now you said you're 50% better. How do you know? Because your face would be really fuzzy. 
and your eyes would be very foggy. And they're not? I can see that. I think you have blue or green eyes. I do. Uh-huh. They're actually blue-green. They're hazel. Or is that hazel? No. They're blue-green. My eyes are blue-green. So you say blue or green, so you're right. So you can see the color of my eyes, and you're saying normally you would not. I have your glasses in my hand. So you normally would not be able to. Is that not correct? Not the colors of your eyes. Not yes. the colors. Yes. Right, without the glasses. Right. Okay, and how's my face? You said my face would be fuzzy. Is it still fuzzy? Um, a little bit. Is it any better? It's getting better. It is getting better. You know what? You have a lot of trauma in your soul, so I'm going to get rid of that right now. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, can I touch your belly? Yeah. Okay. Right now you're going to be an X in the soul. All that pain you've been through. Everything, all the disappointment, all the pain, all the agony of all the losses and all of the traumas and the circumstances you've lived through are now being healed right now. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. Can we get a cover for her, please? And don't lose her glasses. She'll have to throw them away later. Okay. Do you have a boyfriend? You're married? Mm -hmm. You having issues? Um, yeah, I have this. Okay, hold it. It's called none your business. <laughs> <clears throat> but I confirmed that I had something, right? And you said yes, that was true. Okay. So I want you as we're praying to think about, like, God, take that out. Okay? Because that's probably one of the reasons why you're having the other things that we talked about. Okay. So you receive the blood right now. Just receive the blood right now. Okay? Receive the blood on, on all those times. Okay? And everything, all the words and all that. Okay? Right now, and just, I'm decreeing you're being washed right now. Right now, you're being washed of all that pain and all that disappointment, anger, everything else. Right now, let it go, right. <laughs> it's coming out right now. Okay, there it is. See? <laughs> right there. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Right. Receive the power. Your soul is becoming excellent. Right now, being healed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to be di disease free by Monday. Okay, wow. disease free. Come on. By Monday. Okay. Right there. Right there. Right there. Okay, there it is. Okay, can I touch your belly? Is that okay? Touch your belly? Okay, here we go. I see you're getting healed right now. You feel that heat? You feel the heat? You do? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Does it have a little coldness with it too? Or just the heat? Just the heat. I'm cold like an iceberg now. I'm hot and cold. That means you're being delivered of the affliction right now. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Being delivered of the affliction right now. Okay? Yeah. Right there. Okay, the angel's helping you right now. Okay, so I want you to just stand there and let the angel help you, okay? The angel took over for me. Stay right there. Stay right there. Close your eyes. Let me look at you. Thank you. Okay, 
Can I touch you like that? Can I touch you like that? Okay. Then get rid of the last bit of that cancer. Okay? Right now. Then go. Achoo! There it is. There was a stronghold in me that's being demolished right now. Right there. I feel energy racing up my legs, down my arms, right now. Why do I hear hunting dis disease? Does anybody have Huntington's? I don't even know what that is. Huntington's disease. Anybody here have Huntington's? Why am I hearing that? I'll break it off for you. I always thought it was Huntington's. I've never heard of it either. I have. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. All right. Just can you guys receive that right there? It's okay. not good. Amen. It's not good. Something's happened. What's happened? Um, what do you need? <laughs> Something twinging right in here. You're feeling a twinge inside your belly? Mm -hmm. You're being healed. Whatever that was in there is coming out. Yeah. Okay? You feel it? There it is. See? You can feel the movement. There it is. There you go. Let her go. Let her go. There she goes. Okay. Let's praise God for what he's doing. Amen. Did you feel a shift, though? Um, yeah, but I feel like there's more stuff in there that has to come out. Oh, there's always more stuff in there that has to come out. <laughs> Listen, let me, let me, let me, people are too, okay, I'm not chastising you, I'm just saying something, okay? But everybody's too concerned about what hasn't happened yet and not focus on what has. We all tend to do that. Uh, the more you focus on what is happening, the more you get healed. Now, even with our, our this, the gentleman, I don't know what happened to him, okay. With the eyesight, he was like, oh, no, no, no. And I said, well, you know, let's, can you see anything more? I, I had to encourage him, and then he goes, oh, yeah, well, you know what? I can actually see the words now on the exit sign. And I couldn't before. It's 100 feet away. You see what I'm saying? We have to be focusing on those things more, and then they manifest more, amen? Okay. How's your eyesight? Yeah, you. <laughs> Poof. I'm going to punt kick you through the goalposts. You were 30% better, right? Can you still see that exit sign? Amen? Is it any clearer? <laughs> Can you see that number right there on that screen? Yeah, what is it? 947 p.m. Come on. That's pretty small. Do you remember when I asked you to first see that? You said, it just looks like a flash of light. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to preach now because I got to break through with the word. Are you guys ready for the word? All right, look, I'm going to teach you something about how to get free and be able to have regional dominion. Years, many years ago, when I first got out of prison, I developed uh, lupus. Yeah, I had vertigo every day right after I got out of prison. Really severe vertigo. I would just moved my head a little bit, and I would spin out. Okay? And uh, I went to the doctor only because my mom insisted, because I don't like doctors. No offense if you are one. 
But they told me I had lupus, and then from that point on, the Lord told me, don't go back. I'm going to heal you. So I remember I had a dream one night that I was wandering amongst a bunch of tombstones. And I woke up and I thought, what, what does that mean, Lord? And he told me, uh, Mark 5, and I read it. And the verse he gave me was about the man that was dwelling among the tombs. Okay? So I didn't really understand what that meant, but I would see what would happen later. And then by God's grace, he came and he healed me. Okay? So then, I'm going to plow this thing until it breaks. I mean it. So God, by his grace, came and healed me supernaturally. I was sitting on my bed. The power of God fell on me, and I was healed of lupus. Okay, then years later, I started having symptoms come back. How many of you know when it comes back, it's not that you weren't healed. It's just that there's a new layer that the enemy is using against you. Okay. So it came, it came back. Um, it, uh, it wasn't that I wasn't healed, but there was something else going on, more stuff that I needed to be healed. And I started having the vertigo again. And I always had had my whole life, I always had had... The flu. I would have the flu, you know, two or three times a year, even if it wasn't flu season. And I would always have chronic yeast infections, bladder infections, sore throats, everything else my whole life. If I wasn't having a yeast, I was having a bladder. If I wasn't having a bladder, I was having yeast. Or sometimes on special occasions, I'd have them together. It was super fun. And I remember um, at the same time, my mind was really noisy. I was asking God, what is this? What is this? But it was, my mind was filled with this nonsensical, stupid chatter. Like, stupid words would come up, and it wouldn't make any sense. I'm like, that's not you, God. That's the devil. Shut up. And it was just like this noise, noise, noise in my mind. And so my prayer every day was just like, God, get this thing to whatever it is to shut up just so I can hear you. And then, um, you know, that way I'll know what to do. Because when God gives you a word, man, it, that's it for the enemy. It's over. So I remember screaming at God one night and saying, come on, God. Break through this noise. I need to hear your voice. And all of a sudden, I hear this this piercing through this noise, I hear, put it under torment. And when, he, when I heard that, I realized it must have been whatever was making the noise. So I went in the bathroom, and I started screaming at the devil. And, you know, you can take the girl off the street, but you can't take all the street off the girl. So, you know, I'm threatening the devil. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig your, your, your liver out with a spoon. I'm going to poke your eyes out with forks. I'm going to kick you in the you-know-what with my steel-toed boots. And that seemed to shut him up. <laughs> and he got quiet for a minute. And I was like, okay, God, hurry up. Tell me what it is. And he gave me the Mark 5 scripture again. I'm like, wow, dwelling among the tombs. The demoniac was dwelling among the tombs. Am I the demoniac? What are you trying to say to me? And God began to minister to me in that chapter about the spirit of legion. And I didn't know it at the time, but eventually it would lead to me traveling throughout the uh, world and healing people of the spirit of legion. Wow, it's 10 o'clock. You okay with me preaching now? We're plowing, okay, pastor? Okay, all right, so um, I began to unpack this about, this about this chapter of the Spirit of Legion. How many of you have ever fought the Spirit of Legion? Now, you see that? Like, two people raise their hand, three people, four people raise their hand. Guess what? All of you in here are fighting Legion, you don't know it. The enemy wants you not to know. Legion's a big, bad demon, okay, but he stays under wraps. Because he doesn't want you to know that you're fighting him because then you'll get rid of him. 99% of all Christians have legion on them and they don't know it. Okay, so now how do we know? Let me read this story to you. And when you get healed of legion, you're going to see that you're going to start having regional dominion. Not just dominion over your whatever, your house, whatever. You're going to have re dominion over your house, dominion over your neighborhood, dominion over your state, dominion over your country. All right, you're going to have regional dominion. So look at this story here. It says this, They came to the other side of the sea, the region of the Gerasenes, and as soon as Jesus got out of the boat, they met him out of the tombs, a man under the power of an unclean spirit. This man continually lived among the tombs, and no one could subdue him anymore, even with a chain. For he had been bound often with shackles for the feet and handcuffs, but the handcuffs of light changed, he wrenched apart, and he, shack and he shackles, and he rubbed, and he ground together and broke in pieces, and no one had the strength enough to restrain or tame him. Night and day he was among the tombs on the mountains. He was always shrieking and screaming and beating and bruising and cutting himself with stones. So here's Jesus, and he says, what did he say first? He said, when he got out of the boat, on the other side of the region of the Gerasenes. So where's Jesus ministering at? A region, right? 
And then uh, suddenly, as he steps onto this region of the Gerasenes, there met him out of the tombs this man with the spirit of Legion. Okay, now it says, then it goes on in verse 7, it says that Legion, when he saw Jesus, he crying out with a loud voice, ran up to him and said, Jesus, what do you have to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? What is there in common between us? I solemnly implore you, do not torment me. See, this demon hates to be tormented. That's why God told me to put him under torment. Okay, he hates to be tormented. Then Jesus said, what's your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he kept begging him urgently, Jesus, not to send him and the other demons away out of that region. See that? So here Jesus steps on the region of the Gerasenes. There meets in this demon, you know, this man out of the tombs with uh, a demon on him named Legion. And he's begging Jesus, the demon is, not to send him out of the region. Which means what? Legion is a regional demon. He was over the region of the Gerasenes. He had been put in charge of that region. Amen? So here he is, and he's begging Jesus, do not send us out of the region, okay? And it says, uh, he says, send us into the pigs instead, the hogs. And, and then, so Jesus gave permission, and the unclean spirits came out of the man and entered into the hogs. And they rushed headlong down into the sea and drowned themselves. And when the hog feeders went and told the town what happened, the people came to see what was taking place, and they looked at Jesus, and then they looked at the man, the demoniac, who had been possessed by the spirit of legion, sitting there now clothed and in his right mind. And they were struck with fear, and then they began to beg Jesus to leave their region. Wow. I wonder who's talking to Jesus both times. The demons begged Jesus, don't send us out of the region. And the people of that region begged Jesus, leave our region. Gee, I wonder who's talking to Jesus both times. Legion's talking to Jesus through the demoniac and through the people of the region. He's on more than just the demoniac. He's on the people of that region. Did you hear what I said? Then it says that when Jesus stepped into the boat, the man who had been healed of the spirit of legion, begging Jesus, I want to go with you. But Jesus refused to permit it, and he said, go to your home and your family and, and back and tell everybody how much the Lord has done for you and how he's had sympathy for you and mercy for you. And it says the demoniac then, the freed, healed demoniac, the, he's a normal man now, said he departed and began to publicly declaim in the Decapolis the region of the ten cities what Jesus had done for him. See that? When this man got healed of a regional demon called Legion that was over that regional land and was not only on the man, the demoniac, but on the people of that region, when he got healed, he went out to the region of the Decapolis and started a revival. See, that's what happens when you get healed of Legion. You go to your region and you begin to preach and you have regional dominion now over a regional demon who has now been evacuated from your life. And you're able to go and take the regions of the ten cities or of Philly or whatever else you're at and begin to be able to release revival in those regions because you yourself have been healed of a regional demon. So what does this regional demon do to you? Well, it says that the demoniac, when he was delivered of legion, he was clothed and in his right mind. So first of all, you got to look at it. He was in his right mind. This demon affects the mind. Okay, that guy went crazy. He drove the demoniac crazy. He was beating and bruising and cutting himself with stones. He was naked in the tombs. He, his mind was being tormented by the spirit of legion. But when he got delivered of that spirit, he sat there clothed and in his right mind. I remember a guy that I met that... I was just walking through the audience and putting my hands on people's heads. And when I touched this guy on his head, Legion left him. And he had been suffering from bipolar disease for years, his whole life. He would either be very manic or very depressed. And it was tearing his family apart. As soon as I touched him, Legion left and he was instantly healed. His life's completely different now. So this, de this demon is one of the demons that are causing depression, anxiety, you know, bipolar disease, any other clinical type mental disorder. He's one of the demons that causes that. Okay, now this demon also torments your mind by, by talking to you. He's the noisy demon I was hearing in my mind that was, was chatter, chatter, chattering all the time. How do I know? Look, Legion's a chatterbox. Oh, he said he talked more in the New Testament than any other demon. Oh, Jesus, you know, uh, please don't torment me. What do we have in common? Oh, Jesus, don't send us out of the region. Oh, Jesus, send us into the hogs. Oh, Jesus, my name is Legion. Oh, Jesus, what do we have in common? Talk, talk, chatter, chatter, chatter. He's like a tweaker on meth. I mean, he talks. 
He talked more than any other demon in the whole New Testament. He loves to talk and chatter. Why? Because, number one, he likes to tell you stuff about you that's bad. You are no good. And he says it in the first person, so you believe you're thinking it or God's saying it to you. I'm no good. I'm lazy. I'll never amount to anything. I don't have any gifts. I'm getting old. I'm useless. Nobody likes me. He puts these thoughts in your mind because what is he trying to do? He's trying to form you into his image. Instead of you being formed into the image of Christ to know you are above and not below. You are the blessed of God. You are a high priestly nation. You know, that you won't believe what the Bible says about you, but you'll believe these thoughts about you that he's putting in your mind to cause you to be formed into his image. Okay. He also talks and talks and talks. So you know why? So you can't hear God talk. Because he knows that one little revelation will fix everything. It'll fix whatever you're dealing with. So he fills your mind with noise so you can't hear God speak. I had to put him under torment to get him to shut up just for a minute so I could figure out it was him. Okay? So if you got, how many of you got a noisy mind? See that? And no matter what you do, you can't get rid of it. It's because you're probably being afflicted by legion. What else does he do to you? It says that that man sat there clothed and in his right mind. You know what this phrase right mind means in the Greek? It means to be healed of diseases. This 6,000 strong demon is a disease bag. He's a bag of disease. He causes shingles and viruses and bacterias and bladder infections and yeast infections and the flu. Where do you think swine flu comes from? I'm not kidding. I remember once I went to a meeting, this is when I first was learning about Legion, so I had no dominion over him, right? So I would go to a meeting, I'm totally sick, I got the flu, I've got a bladder, a bladder and a yeast all at the same time. I'm supposed to be praying for people and getting them healed, and here I am, totally sick myself. Everybody in the meeting is sick. Everybody in the meeting has the flu. So I'm like totally disgusted. I knew it was Legion, right? But I didn't want to say anything because people get scared, oh my God, Legion, 6,000 strong. <laughs> So I don't say nothing, right? But I thought, well, I'm just going to line them up and pray for them anyway. I'm going to plow. So I lined them all up, right? And I started, I was like, in the name of Jesus, I find this sickness now in Jesus' name. And they go, thanks a lot, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. And they were sicker than they, you know, when they started. Finally, you know, the whole line is over. It's time to eat lunch. I'm so grateful. I'm like, thank you, God. Right? And then we all go eat and we come back. And these ladies come running up to me and they go, oh, Katie, 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 oh my God, you're not going to believe what happened. I'm like, what? And they're like, we were taping you when you were prophesying and praying for people earlier. And I'm thinking, great timing, good time to tape me. It's awesome timing. And I go, and? And they go, when we went back home during lunch and we listened to it, we could hear a bunch of pigs grunting in the background and they go even my husband walked in while we were listening to it and he says what's that sounds like a bunch of pigs I had not said anything about legion to anybody okay I used to be so scared of this demon because he man I swear to God everywhere I go he would kick me in the butt I would I would land someplace and he would jump on me and he would make me sick. I mean, you know it's a demon when all of a sudden you're fine and then you go somewhere and like within a half an hour you have a bladder yeast and a, and a flu. In half an hour you're like, if any of you don't realize that that's a demon at that time, you're not paying attention. Okay. This is not like I just got, I picked up something in the plane. This is a demon spirit, booger. Okay. But man, I got so healed of that guy. Now he's like a little cockroach under my foot. It's like put out a cigarette butt under my shoe. That's for those of you that used to smoke. Anyway. Um, <laughs> this demon is something else. Now, how does he get his right to attack us when you're dwelling among the tombs? What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? You see, there are things in our soul like memories we've lived through, circumstances we've lived through, pain that we went through that allow demons to attack us. When our soul is wounded, 
It causes a legal landing strip by, by things, tombstones, memories, painful events. It gives a legal landing strip for the enemy to attack us. Jesus said it in John 14, 30. He said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. Okay? That means there's nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. Where's the in me part? See, your spirit man has nothing in common with the demon. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. But your soul does. Your soul gets wounded when you dwell among the tombs. Your soul gets wounded when you go through traumatic events. This, your soul gets wounded when you have something that happened in your life that you're still dwelling on. A painful event, a divorce, separation, the loss of your children, loss of a loved one. When we're dwelling among the tombs, it's, it's like, you know how you go to a, a graveyard and you sit in front of a tombstone and you remember a person's life and you feel the grief and the pain and everything else come up from the loss, from things you went through with, when that person was alive, from, the, from their loss of them being past now and them not being in your life. And you start dwelling among that tombstone. You start dwelling in your grief. You start thinking about that thing. Oh, this happened to me. That happened to me. And I can't quite get over it. How many of you are dwelling among the tombs right now? See that? You see, uh, there's a lot of things that have happened to us, and those painful events, they live in here. They live in the soul. If you ask yourself, am I dwelling among the tombs? Well, ask yourself, do I feel pain in my soul right now when I think about a certain event or person or situation or traumatic event that I've had to live through? And you can feel that pain in here, can't you? Do you understand what I'm saying? You feel it in here, don't you? Right? Now, that's interesting because the demoniac had said three times he was dwelling among the tombs. Wow, when the Bible says three times something, that means you need to pay attention to it. So he was dwelling out of the pain of his past. And that's what allowed Legion to attack him. Remember, what's ever in your soul is a legal right for an enemy to attack you. Now, look at what the word dwell means because it's so interesting, right? When I looked at the word dwell in the, um, <clears throat> in the Strong's Concordance, it said this, watch. The word dwell means this. Divine powers that are said to dwell in the soul, to pervade the soul, to govern the soul, and to prompt the soul. See, when you're dwelling among the tombs, it gives divine powers, like legion, the right to pervade, to prompt, and to govern your soul. We have something in us that's in common with him. Now, do you notice that when Jesus got out of the boat, what's the first thing Legion said to him? He ran up to him and says, oh, Jesus, what is there in common between us? I solemnly implore you, do not torment me. Wow, right there the demon is telling us that what Jesus said in John 4, uh, 10, 36, or 14, 36, where he says, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. The demon was agreeing with that. He's saying, wow, I finally ran into a man. This guy's different from every other man I've ever ran into. He's got nothing in him that's in common with me. So he can actually torment me and I can't torment him. The prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him. So he has no power over me. The demons will not have any power over you when you have nothing in your soul that's in common with them. And that demon recognized that Jesus, being a perfect man, no wound in his soul. He's not dwelling among the tombs. This perfect man had nothing in him that was in common with Legion, so Legion couldn't torment Jesus, but Jesus could torment him. How many of you want to put a big demon like Legion under torment? It's going to happen when you have nothing in your soul that's in common. You got to get healed of these memories. You got to get healed of this pain. You can't keep carrying it around. People come up to me all the time and say, I'm sick, pray for me. And then I start talking to them. Okay, well, what's happening in your life? And they start so this happened to me, and this happened to me, and this happened to me. What are they doing? They're dwelling among the tombs. They bring their list. Listen, I'm not trying to diss anyone that's in pain. But I'm telling you that you must get healed of these things. You cannot stay in pain. You cannot allow the memory to torment you anymore. You cannot stay in pain because you are, when you do, you're dwelling among the tombs and you're allowing spirits like legion to assault you. Did you hear what I said? 
you have all the power in you you need to get healed of that. Remember we talked about dunamis power and how it's fire and everything else. I mean, your spirit man right now is full of Holy Spirit and dunamis power, and dunamis means excellent of soul. When you release dunamis into that tomb that you have, that you're dwelling on, you're thinking about all the time, and that it's controlling you, it will, it will heal that tomb, and then Legion will have to leave. Look, I've seen miracles like crazy happen when Legion leaves. I, I've, I saw a guy that had nerve damage from being run over by a car. The car threw him up on the, on the hood of the car and, and when it hit him so hard. He had so much nerve damage that when he would lean forward just a little bit, it would cut off his airway, and he would, like, gasp for breath, and it, he wouldn't be able to suck in air. Totally healed when he sealed the Legion. I saw a lady who was a professional speaker. She had shingles all over her chest when she came in the meeting. When she got healed of the Legion, she went in the bathroom, lifted up her shirt, completely disappeared. I had a lady with a demon in her legs. Her legs swollen up like this big after she had a uh, surgery to stop her uh, seizures. She was having multiple seizures every day. The doctor said, this surgery will heal you of your seizures, but you will be left with edema, severe edema for the rest of your life. And it was true. For 10 years, her legs would swell up like buckets of water. She said she could feel the water rushing into her legs. When she got healed of the legion, she felt the water rushing out, and she hasn't had her legs swollen since. That was over a year and a half ago. That was at Randy Clark's meeting. Hallelujah. Then when you saw me at Randy Clark. Okay, I mean, I got people who healed instantly of bladder infections, yeast infections. I mean, all kinds of crazy things. When legion comes off of people, you're not going to have the flu anymore. You're not going to have a bladder infection anymore. You're not going to have a yeast infection anymore. You're going to be healed. Your mind's going to be quiet, and you're going to have regional dominion. It's hard to dislodge this bugger, but we're going to dislodge him. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Now, look. Remember, Jesus stepped on the region of the Gerasenes, right? And a regional demon came to meet him. The demon said, please don't send us out of the region. And then the people of that region came and said the same thing that Legion said through the demoniac. Please leave our region. So it's not just the demoniac that was being affected or controlled by Legion. All the people of that region were. See, that's what gives, you got to understand something. It's the condition of people's souls that allow a demon like a regional demon like Legion to be over a region. He's over a region because everybody in the region is a mess. We're all angry. We're all sad. We all have this and happened to us and this thing happened to us and this thing happened to us. And everybody all over the earth right now is dwelling among the tombs. Man, you can see it on Facebook. I get really irritated reading Facebook. Before, I used to never read it. Now I read it and I go, wounded, wounded, dwelling among the tombs, wounded, wounded, dwelling among the tombs. It's like everybody's mouth and all the abundance of their heart speaks on Facebook. Oh, my gosh, all the pain, all the anger, all the bitterness, all the my opinion, this opinion, that opinion, any opinion. It doesn't matter what kind of opinion. If it's a hurtful opinion, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spit my opinion. It's like, man, everybody is so wounded, and we wonder why there are demonic regional powers in charge over regions of land all over the earth, because we're all so stinking wounded. We're all dwelling among the tombs. I'm not beating anybody up. Look, I used to dwell among the tombs myself. Now when I feel myself dwelling among a tomb, I go at it. What do I mean by that? Like, let's say something traumatic happened to me, and I catch myself thinking about it over and over again. That means I'm dwelling and I sick that thing with doom as fast before it has a chance to, like, settle into my soul. Did you hear me? So when you catch yourself dwelling on something, stop before it becomes a tomb. Send dunamis to it. Put your hand on your belly and say, I send dunamis to that, that tomb. I send it to that memory. I send it to that trauma, to that pain, and I command my soul to be excellent. And you keep on working that until you stop thinking about it. And then the next time it comes to your mind and you remember a painful event, it won't feel the same. You'll remember it happened, but you won't be crying or be upset or be, you know, terrified or be angry or bitter or anything else because you've been healed. Do you understand? I want you to close your eyes right now and ask the Holy Spirit to tell you what tomb are you dwelling among.
How many of you heard something? Raise your hand. Okay. Now, even if you didn't hear something, do you think Holy Spirit knows what's, what you're dwelling on? Sure he does. Okay, I want you to put your hand on your belly. I want you to pray after me. Ready? Say, I am filled with dunamis. I send that power to the tomb that I'm dwelling on. I decree every painful memory, every traumatic event, every difficult circumstance that I'm dwelling on right now is being healed by the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. I am excellent of soul. I'm not like the demoniac. I'm not dwelling on my past. I'm not dwelling on pain. I'm not bitter or angry. I'm not rejected or abandoned. I'm not upset. I'm free. I've got dunamis. I am excellent of soul in my mind, my will, and my emotions. I decree Dunamis is destroying every tomb that I'm dwelling amongst. And Legion is not going to have anything in me that's in common with him. Right now, in Jesus' name, I decree it. I wipe out those tombs. I'm not controlled by them. I'm not sad because of them. I'm not afflicted because of them. Every memory in my mind, my will, and my emotions is being healed now in Jesus' name. Now say amen. amen. Okay, amen. Look, what happens is when you get healed of legion, you're going to have that regional anointing. Remember that man, it says that he, he sat there clothed, the demoniac, when he was delivered of legion, sat there clothed and in his right mind. You know what the word clothed means? It means a mantle. When he got delivered of legion, he received a mantle. And it was a mantle for regional revival because he went, it said, to the region of the Decapolis, the ten cities, and began to talk about Jesus. And the people were, mar it said the people marveled. Wow, he went out and preached in a region, and he took the region for Jesus. But it happened after he got delivered of a regional demon, and he was under the power of a regional demon because he was dwelling among the tombs. Do you know what I'm saying? you got to go after those terrible memories. You don't dwell on them. Don't keep thinking about what happened to you and this happened to you and that happened to you. Go after it. You have dunamis, soul healing, excellence of soul, power inside you, an endless supply, a tank full that never runs out. Work it. Look, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20 in Ephesians 3.20 that God does super abundantly above and beyond all that you could ever ask or imagine according to the power, that's dunamis, that's at work in you. There's a condition to the miracle happening, to the super abundant things happening in your life. It happens according to the dunamis power that's at work in you. You got to put your dunamis to work. Put Ephesians 3.16 and the Amplified Classic up on the screen. Can you do that for me? Look, you got to put this to work. You got a tank full of dunamis, and it's like you're dying of thirst. You're outside that tank going, oh, my God, I'm dying of thirst. We'll reach down and open up that tap and take a big drink. You've got a big, big tank full of living water inside of you. Open it up and take a drink. How do you do that? You use your faith. You know you have it. You use your decrees. You work that dunamis with your decrees. I am X in the soul. I'm not dwelling among the tombs. I release my dunamis into that memory right now to wipe it out. I'm not controlled by legion. I have nothing in common because I have dunamis power, and I'm becoming excellent in every part of my being. You work that dunamis. You work it. Do we have that scripture up? Can we get it? Ephesians 3.16 in the Amplified Classic. That's it. I'm leaving. <laughs> I want them to read it. I want them to read it. That's why I appreciate it. I know it by heart. But I want the people to read it. Basically, look, if you have it in your phone, look it up right now. Come on. Work the dunamis. Come on. And then do we have the worship team still here. It's getting late, I know. You all right? 
Still plowing. Look, we need to plow in this place until finally metal starts disappearing. Yeah. You know, I mean, really. Plow, 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 plow until it breaks. Okay? Because normally it would have broken a lot bigger by now, but we're going to plow, plow, plow. I'm part of that plowing process. Other people are going to come, they're going to plow, plow. Okay. Ah, well, let's see. Yeah, that's okay, I guess, but not really. What version is that? Eh. <laughs> what else you got? What is it? Which one? In your, okay, let's, let's look at that. Okay. Okay, so Paul says that according to his riches and glory, may he, meaning the Lord, grant you to be strengthened with power. Everybody say dunamis. Through his spirit in your inner being. Where's that? Where's your inner being? Right, yeah, your spirit doesn't need to be strengthened. Your soul does. So here's Paul. This is Paul, the Apostle Paul, and he's praying that you would be strengthened with Duna's power in your soul. Mm, gee, imagine that. He stole my message. That's a joke. You're supposed to laugh. Did you hear what I said? Paul's saying that you sh he's praying that you would be strengthened with power. That's Dunamis. Through the Holy Spirit in your inner being. That's your soul. He's praying for your soul to be strengthened by dunamis. He's praying for you to become excellent of soul. What's he doing? He's working dunamis. He's doing what Ephesians 3.20 says. That you have the superabundant above and beyond all you could ever ask or imagine. According to the power that's at work in you. He's using this prayer to put the power at work. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Ready? We're going to pray it together. Ready? Say, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you... To be strengthened with power, that's dunamis, through his spirit, in your inner being, that's your soul. Do it again. Ready? We pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with dunamis power, through his spirit, in your inner being, your soul. Now say my, like my inner being. Okay, ready? That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you, me, to be strengthened with dunamis power through his spirit in my inner being, my soul. Look, I want you to read that in the cla Amplified Classic and, re and memorize it. Now I want you to put your hand on your neighbor and decree that over them. And decree that the tomb in their soul is being healed by Duna's power. You're putting it to work. And that they're being strengthened in their soul with Duna's power. Go, pray. Keep praying. Come on, keep on praying. Pray their mind would be strengthened, their will would be strengthened, their emotions would be strengthened. Ask them what their tomb is. Decree that tomb is being destroyed by Duna's power, that they're excellent as Saul. Okay. We're going to get some real. Work that dunamis, come on, just for another one minute, work the dunamis. Work it. Make them excellent of soul. Heal those memories. Release it on those tombs. Jump. Okay, now say amen. Okay, look, this is what we're going to do. Wow, it's so late. Right, man, I'm determined to have more miracles. I'm determined. Because some people left, they said, oh, they, she didn't get it yet. 
Well, I'm working on it. You want to break through something higher than me? I'll come here and beat my head against the wall until it breaks. How's that? Okay. We're going to stand up, and you're going to come up to the altar. I noticed nobody came up to the altar during any of the worship. Get your butt up here, and we're going to sing. Because when you sing, you know what happens? You get healed. As you sing, the dunamis power is going to flow. Amen. Angel's going to move around. He's going to heal people. You're going to get healed of some tombs, baby, tombs. Legion's going to come off of you. You're going to have regional dominion. It's going to be awesome. Okay. I want you to sing. If I see you going like this, I'm going to kick your butt. Open your mouth and sing. That's how you get healed. Amen? the lights a little bit so people feel like they're like in the presence a little bit if we can please
reach out your hands like this. I'm going to pray for you. Don't pray. Just receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree there's been a penetration of your power into the souls of these people right now, that they are not going to dwell among the tombs anymore, that the dunamis power has flowed into them and wiped out those tombs, and they are excellent of soul. And I decree that the enemy now is being removed, and I bind you, Legion, in the name of Jesus. Yes. I command you to come off of these people right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command that you leave right now and you take diseases, you take viruses, you take bacteria, you take chatter. You take everything with you in, your, in their mind right now in the name of Jesus, and you go out into dry and air places where you can find no rest. And I decree they are healed in the name of Jesus. And they're going to walk in regional power and a mantle that's been given to them by God. In Jesus' name right now. And then as I pray this prayer, I want everybody to now lift up your voice and shout to the Lord right now. Shout to the Lord right now. question did any of you have like water dripping out of your eyes even though you're not really crying or maybe stick your finger in your ear and see do you have any wetness in your ear or maybe you felt the water draining down the back of your throat or you had it dripping down the back of your nose or anything like that does anybody have that if you have that can you raise your hands come up and just talk to me now right now if you have water coming out and you're not really crying or anything can you come up here and tell me about it real quick there should be more people, so we haven't sung long enough, obviously. I'm going to crack this nut open. Come on this side right here. Okay. Tell us your name. Valerie. Valerie, go ahead and, yeah, line up right behind Valerie. Come on. Valerie, you, I asked if anybody had water coming out. Did you? Yes, I had water coming out of my ear. So let's bring the music all the way down so we can hear Valerie. She said, Valerie, you have water coming out of your ear? Yes. Is that unusual? 
Yes. Have you ever had that happen? Yes. Have you ever had that happen before? No. Okay, why would that happen? I've seen thousands and thousands of people have water drain out of their body as a supernatural sign that they were healed of legion. Why is that? Because legion is a water animal. Do you remember when he said to Jesus, can I go into the pigs? And Jesus said yes. He gave him permission, and he went into the pigs. Did he stay in the pigs? No, he drove the pigs where? Into the water. Because he loves the water. All demons, they like it wet. They don't like it dry. What does that say in the one scripture? When a demon comes out of a man, it goes into dry and waterless places and can find no rest. They don't like it where there's no water. They can't rest when there's no water. And the Bible says, so it, will, it says to itself, I will return to the house from which it came from. What is this house made out of? 72% water. I will return to the house from which I came from. So it goes back. It finds the house swept, clean, and put in order. So it goes and finds seven spirits more wicked than itself. And they come and they dwell there. That's the same word dwell. It's used in Mark 5. It means powers that are said to govern and control the soul. The spirit gets kicked out of a man. It goes into a place where there's no water. It doesn't like it there without that water. It can't find any rest. So it goes back to the house made of water from which it came from, and it dwells there because there's still a wound in the soul that's allowed it to come back. That's why people lose their healing, because there's still a wound in the soul that allows the enemy to come back. But legion is a water animal, and I've seen... Thousands of people have water drain out. So you had water coming out of this ear. Yes. A lot, a little bit? Pretty much, actually. I thought maybe when I was crying earlier, somehow it went, <laughs> dripped into my ear or something. So you thought the water actually, it's like, wow, how did this work? So you thought a tear might have gone into the ear. Yes. That's pretty far-fetched. I work that way. You work that way, okay. <laughs> Now, do you have any problems with your ears or any bacterial no. or viruses or any issues or a uh, noisy mind or anything like that? Uh, really noisy mind. How's your mind right now? Actually, pretty good. Because you've been delivered a legion. Let's give God a big praise. Amen. <laughs> Come on up. What's your name? Marcia. Marcia? Yes. What happened? Um, when I was uh, watching, I feel my right. Um, I start to have water out, like tears. But were you crying? No. You weren't crying, but, and you had one eye water, and usually when you cry, you have two eyes, don't you? Yes. But you only had the one right eye. Only one. Was it a lot, a little bit? What was it? Um, a fair amount? Yes. A fair amount coming out of this eye. The right, right eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any, like, bacterial infections, any pains, any flus, any noisy mind, anything like that? No. Not even a noisy mind? Mm, yes, maybe. How does it, how's it right now? It's perfect. Because you've been delivered a legion. Let's give God a big praise. Amen. Come on up. What's your name? Theodore. What happened? I had uh, back in my throat. It was like I was drinking water. Uh, <laughs> like gulping water down? Yeah, yeah. I have people say that a lot of times. Like they'll have so much water coming out, they almost choke on it. Yeah, I had to stop. <laughs> you had to stop? I was saying it. I was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It felt like you're choking? Just for a second there, yeah. yeah how, is that unusual for you? Has that ever happened before? No, nothing like this. No. Nothing like that? No, I had, had, had left ear and my left eye as well. Left ear had water in it too? Mm -hmm. So when you stuck your finger in there, you could feel it? Yes. And how about your eye? Yeah. Yes. And was it, were you crying? No, I mean, the tears, this, it was this side. It was just the left side. It was the outside. You know what I find? that Legion lives on the regions of, he's a regional demon, right? So he lives on different regions of the body. How do the doctors explain the brain? Frontal lobe region, occipital lobe region, temporal lobe region. A lot of times when you get healed of Legion, you see the water coming out of ears, eyes. I had it once splurt out of my forehead, literally go <laughs> out of my forehead. Not kidding. And I felt, my brain after that felt like I took the biggest drink of ice cold water ever. I had been delivered a legion. I've had it run out my nose. I had my ears uh, coming out of my ears. I had it go down the back of my throat. I've had one lady that, if I said your name, her name, you know who she is. She's a very famous television person. I was praying for her long distance. She wasn't even in the same room with me. She was in another country. She was having problems with her hormones and her thyroid and everything else. She was in the doctor getting checked when it happened, and I'm praying for her while I'm in the United States, and all of a sudden, her whole pant leg got soaking wet. 
And she called me afterwards. She goes, I was in the doctor's. And my pant leg got soaking wet, and I knew you were praying for me. And the doctor's like, I can't explain this. I don't know what happened, how that, how that water came out of your body. And she goes, but we know, don't we, Katie? <laughs> I said, that's right. How do you feel? I feel fantastic. Do you? Uh, my mind was never shut up, and it's, it's not saying, it's, it's quiet. Because you have been delivered of legion. Let's give God a big praise. Amen? Come on forward. I had a guy in prison. He was living on the, the tomb of his mother and father. His, his mother, his father was in the house, and his mother had died. He was the only person that ever loved him, really. He, she had died while I was in prison. He never shed a tear, because you can't shed a tear when you're a man in prison. And he held it in. And then what happened is, I came, I, I taught people how to not dwell among the tombs. He asked the Lord to heal him of the pain of his mother's death. And then when he went back to his unit... He got in his bed, and all of a sudden he had to jump up and run to the bathroom, and he threw up about a, a gallon or two of water. And then when he came the next day, the Lord told me, yeah, he got healed of diverticulitis. He threw it up, and that was from Legion. Amen? What's your name? Troy. What happened, Troy? I felt moisture running down my corner of my left eye. Yeah. Uh, was that normal? No. Never happened before? No. Other than when I'm crying. But Other than, were, were you crying? No. How do you feel right now? Awesome. You feel driven? Yes. Because you've been delivered and healed the Legion. Okay. Come on, let's give God a big praise. Come on up. What happened? What's your name? Marie. What happened, Marie? I have water coming out of my nose. Pouring out the nose? Right. A lot? A little bit? What? A little bit. Yeah? Is that unusual? Yeah, it is. Were you thinking, I got some crazy post-nasal drip. What's up? I don't know, but when you were talking before, I had a brother who died in prison, and that was that hit my soul when you were talking about that. So that was your tomb that you were dwelling among. Right, and shingles, too, I have, and the dry eye. It's just a lot of, I had five brothers who died. Five brothers. Yeah. How did, that's a lot of tombs. Yeah. It's a lot of pain. Four brothers and one sister. Yeah. How do you feel right now? I'm glad I said it out loud. Yeah, amen, huh? You're being healed, amen, right? And you know what? That shingles isn't going to come back. I had another guy. He had shingles, and he had it all across his eye. And after he, he actually recovered from the shingles from medication, and then after that, all the nerves in his forehead were dead. So he would catch himself waking up in the middle of the night, scratching away at his forehead because he couldn't feel nothing. He would scratch away so hard he'd wake up and he had blood all over his head. And his, and his fellow employees would say, what did you do last night? Did you get into a fight or something? He's like, no, man, it's because of shingles. But after he got healed and he had water come out, he, ne he, he could feel all the nerve endings grew back and he could feel his forehead again completely. How do you feel? I feel better. Let's give God a big praise. You've been healed of the Legion. Come on up. <laughs> What's your name? Karen. Karen. What happened, Karen? So... This nostril and the back of my throat was full of fluid. So you had to run out this nostril, but you also had to run back down the back. Yeah. A lot or a little bit? There's like a huge amount in my throat. And I'm, I didn't wipe my nose yet, but so not as much on my nose. There's a huge amount coming down the throat. Yeah. Is it still coming down right now? It just started to clear up. It just started to clear up right now. So it's been doing it that whole time where you're standing in line. Yeah. That's a lot of fluid. Is that unusual? Yeah. Are you crying or anything? No. No, not at all. How do you feel? I feel, I feel great. The power, I mean, the fire of God is like all over me. Because you've been delivered and healed the legion. Let's give God a big praise. Amen. All right, now, who else, is, who else has it happened to in your two chicken to come up? Hi. You're not too chicken. Tell us your name. Joey. What happened, Joey? I started getting water coming out of my left eye and a lot in my throat, down my throat. Is that unusual for you? Yes. Were you crying, Joey? No. Besides, you don't cry out of one eye, right? You cry out of both. But you just had the one eye. The left eye. Coming out of the left eye. And then you had it coming back down the back? In the throat. Now, what do you have wrong with your body? How long do you have for me to tell you? Well, let's not go through the whole list. But, but. Uh, well, the main thing, I have trigeminal neuralgia on the right side. Okay. I have sco bad scoliosis, bad arthritis, degenerative discs, all that. Fused right ankle, rod in my... In okay. there. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something. Do you have, are you in pain? Yes. All the time? All the time. Now, Heidi, do you feel any shift right now since this water is, you've had this water of sign? I, I felt uh, better from here down, but the pain in the nerve in my face. It's still there? Yeah. But you feel better from here down. What does that mean? Less pain? 
less pain, not totally gone. How much less pain? Like when you walked in, what were you from one to ten in pain? Um, a lot, most of the time in ten pain. You're most of the time in ten pain. Okay, what are you right now? Okay. I have to say, when I worship, yeah. my pain level goes down. Yeah, because you're in the presence. Okay, so now, but now you've had a deliverance because you've been delivered a legion. You said the water came down your throat. Was it a lot? A lot, yeah. It was a lot. Unusual, huh? I felt choking. You were choking on it and it was that much. Okay, how's the, so how's the pain level now between one to 10? Um, maybe seven. Maybe seven. Okay, ready? We're gonna, even more. So now, Lord, that we've got rid of legion, we just decree that Joey's gonna be totally healed. She's gonna have no pain. She's going to be able to walk and move and everything else. And even that nerve damage in her upper head is going to be healed right now. So we thank you, Lord. We release the angel to minister to her. And we release power into her soul. So she'll be healed of all the trauma she's been through. And her body will be healed too. And we thank you, Lord, that you're working on her right now. Did You just swallowed again. You're feeling heat? Lots? Here. Yeah, because you're being healed right now. See, she's feeling the heat. Keep praying. Come on. All even more of that power, Lord. We thank you that she's totally being healed. She's going to be restored. She's going to have no pain. She's going to be able to walk around. I even asked that the metal angel would come and replace that metal rod with real body parts. And that her nerve endings would be completely healed right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that you're doing. See, now you're having even more manifestation is that you're crying or is that water coming out see that big tear coming down her face i just asked her she's crying she's not crying she has more legion coming out i want you to turn to your neighbor start praying for each other to have more power go more power go to your tombs i think we're on the cusp of another breakthrough excellent of soul. The dunamis is flowing. All tombs are being destroyed. All ancient gates are open. Right now, right now, right now, no more dwelling among the tombs. All pain is being healed by dunamis power. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. All nerves being reconstructed, organs being healed, bones being fixed. Right now, and mind being fixed and healed. Right now, deliverance. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, keep on going, Lord. We thank you, God, right now. More healing, more healing. In Jesus' name, right now. In Jesus' name, right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, how do you feel, Joey? Joey still feels heat. Anybody else feel heat or anything else? Wave at me if you feel the presence. Okay, right? Did anybody, okay, see, a lot of people are feeling more presence. Did anybody else have more water coming out? Anybody have water? If you're, you did, come up here and tell me. If you had water draining out of anywhere, come up here and tell me. Okay, stay right there, and you just stay in the presence, Joey. Okay, all right, tell us your name. Marilyn. Marilyn, what happened? Well, um, before I came into the service tonight, my... I just clogged up, and, I, and the whole surface here, I'm, I'm... So you were clogged up, when you say you're clogged up, you're clogged up in your sinuses? Yeah. You're, yeah. yeah. I was perfectly fine. And then, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you clogged up. Okay, and then what happened? Well, while we were worshiping, everything just totally cleared up. Did you have water drainage, too? Down my throat. Down the back of your throat? Mm -hmm. And now all that stuffiness is gone? Yeah. Do you have, like, allergies or, or sinus infections or anything else like that? No. Because Legion knew it was about to leave, so it was, like, acting up a little bit. And now you got the drainage, so you have been delivered and healed of the Legion. How do you feel? <laughs> Fantastic. All right, let's give God a praise. Amen. Did you have something? Okay, well, come up. Tell us your name. Joel. What happened, Joel? Uh, brother and I were just praying down there about being healed of anything, uh, any tombs within us. And yeah. uh, I began, you know. And you began watering in your eye. Mm -hmm. Right on the second prayer. Yeah. See, right now, a lot of you are close to your next breakthrough. Keep praying. Come on. Come on. Let's, be, let's pray together. Uh, so how do you feel, Joey? Um, I don't know. Normal. <laughs> well, when you think about a tomb, do you feel like the same pain? No, I wasn't feeling any pain. Yeah, well, because men are like that. 
Just saying. They tend to like, I'm not bothered. <laughs> I'm not bothered. Okay, but you had a sign, so I believe that you've been delivered and healed the legion. Do you agree? I'll take that. Let's give God a praise for that. Amen. Okay, everybody come over here. Let's lay hands on this gentleman right here. Right now. Just put your hand out and let's pray for him. Lord, let's, right now, we fill this man with the power of God. We fill him with the power of God right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right now. We feel, fill him with fire of God, power of God. See, I feel the heat, so it's working. Keep praying. We release it to him right now in Jesus' name, right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. See, now, to me, if he's manifesting like this, there's still not enough breakthrough in this place. Because he should, it should just come out. Okay? So we still need to, we need to work our dunamis in this church. Amen. Right now. Okay, now... Pastor is praying for him, so we're going to back up Pastor. Everybody lay your hands on Pastor. Just pray for Pastor to have more power. Don't pray for the man now. Don't command it to get out. Pray for pastor. What? We have to go under headship. Everybody pray for pastor. Everybody pray for pastor to be empowered. Pastor's taking charge. Pray for pastor.
Let me tell you why I'm telling you to pray for pastor, okay? Ready? What happens is this, is if everybody starts rebuking a demon, we all have different levels of authority. So the demon goes out and in and out and in and out and in. So that's why we want one person to take charge, and we pray for that person to be filled with fire and dunamis and for their authority to increase, okay? Because we don't want to have this mixed level of authority trying to go after one demon because it will just do this, in and out, in and out. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Okay? So that's why we're backing up pastor right now. Okay? I'm told that this has happened to this gentleman before, so he has many multiple layers of issues. But why is the demon able to attack him? Because what is in his... Right. So it's all about the soul being... Pastor speaking truth. He says your soul is whole. Pastor saying your soul is whole. You are blessed. You're sanctified by God. He's making decrees over him. Do you understand? About his condition of his soul and his position in Christ. Okay? Okay, so let's go. We agree with you, O oh God. We agree with you, O oh God. We agree with you. We call that for in Jesus' name. Okay. Look, when you have listen, listen, they're gonna work on, on this man here. But Everybody gets all like, okay, wow, it's not coming out. We have no power. That's not true. Some of these things are so deeply rooted in the bloodline that you have to soak a person in the presence for a while, and then it will penetrate into, the power will penetrate deep into all the layers in his bloodline that are in his soul. Do you understand that? So it's not like we don't have any power. It's like this is a process. Some people have to go through a process of healing. If I were this man and his family, I would take soaking discs and play them all night long in his room while he's sleeping, all, all day long in his house while he's in his house because he needs to be deeply saturated. The deliverance might not happen tonight, and we can't be disappointed. We can't think, well, we don't have any power. It's not true. I've had many things that come out instantly, and I have other things that I had to work on. I had to get in the presence for an elongated period of time. I had, it's like sitting in a bathtub and soaking, okay? Do you understand? I want everybody to come over this way. We want them to work on it. I want you to come over this way, and I'm going to encourage you over here. <laughs> 